Welcome to the ChatGPT Expert course by Simply Learn. In this video, we will discuss what is ChatGPT, GPT-4 and working of ChatGPT. Moving ahead with the course, we will see the use of ChatGPT in various domains and hands-on demo to use ChatGPT for SEO, digital marketing and more. However, we will share the best tips and tricks of ChatGPT. But before we begin, consider subscribing to our channel and hit the bell icon to never miss any update from Simply Learn. On that note, we present you Postgraduate Program in AI and Machine Learning. Elevate your professional journey by enrolling in this AI and ML course presented through a partnership between Purdue University and IBM. Acquire sought-after abilities like machine learning, deep learning, natural language processing, computer vision, reinforcement learning, generative AI, prompt engineering, chat GPT, and a multitude of others that are in high demand. Learn generative AI, explainable AI, chat GPT, machine learning algorithms, supervised and unsupervised learning and much more. Hurry up and enroll now. Find the complete course details from the link mentioned in the description box below. So without any further ado, let's begin with chat GPT expert course that covers all the uses with demonstration on how chat GPT is helpful in various domains. Now over to our tutors. Hey, I'm Shariar Jalil. I live in Ontario, Canada. I have been in IT sector for the past 20 years. I recently took the professional certificate program in artificial intelligence and machine learning. The course has changed the way I look at things and helped me back some amazing freelance projects. I started my career in 1999 and over the years I have worked with many companies. My last tenure was with IBM Canada. My aim was to restart my career and learn something that would help accelerate my career. I thought artificial intelligence can make me future ready. The course in artificial intelligence and machine learning is provided by Simply Learn in association with Purdue University, which is why I chose the course. I did not have high expectations from online course, but my experience was simply awesome. The quality of interaction within the course was simply amazing. The course faculty was also very experienced and knowledgeable. After the course, my knowledge has grown manifold. I have immensely benefited from Python and coding skills. I am able to get some new freelance projects. Also, I am planning to start an AI-based startup with my friend where I feel that the learning from the course to be very helpful. I am really delighted and happy. In my free time, I try to create meaningful content on YouTube and I talk about new technologies and what kind of courses professionals should be taking along with many other topics. I definitely recommend this course to everyone. After all, when it comes to new skills to advance your career, there should be no compromise. You should always learn from the best. Meet John a talented programmer who is looking to start a company that used his personally developed mobile application to connect restaurants and customers for booking and reservations. Even though the app was ready, John had difficulty getting together a team for his startup. Needing separate people for sales, marketing, programming, content creation, and customer support. Hiring reliable manpower while being strict with his budget was getting difficult. He reached out to his friend Ryan who said John could start his company without hiring any new people, thanks to just a single AI-based tool. John couldn't believe it, which led Ryan to introduce ChatGPT, the revolutionary AI chatbot being developed by OpenAI. It is a state-of-the-art natural language processing, or NLP model, that uses a neural network architecture to provide responses. This means that the ChatGPT bot can answer questions without being explicitly told what the answer is using its own intellect, unlike previous AI chatbots. So, how does ChatGPT help John in filling out his team? Regarding sales, ChatGPT can provide full-fledged sales pitches based on the correct prompts. It can provide tips on how to pitch your product to businesses, removing the need for sales training completely customized to your requirements and your prompts. If you don't like some things about the response, you can ask for certain changes and the chatbot will make sure they are done. When it comes to marketing, ChatGPT can provide efficient marketing strategies, which can help new entrepreneurs learn how to market their products to prospective clients. 
It can provide trending keywords that marketers can use for SEO purposes while providing ad copies for your website and blog. Speaking of websites, since John can do a lot of the heavy lifting and programming, ChatGPT can help proofread the code and help out when looking for bugs to fix. Apart from basic bug fixing, it can also provide sample code structures for different programming languages, allowing John to focus more on improving core functionality and workflow rather than fixing basic code errors. Websites and blogs content is very helpful in gathering potential customer leads. The revolutionary bot can provide full-length blog posts with near-perfect fast accuracy in seconds, allowing further customization, like choosing the length of the subject matter to the complexity of language. For John's customer support, the bot can draft complete customer service emails based on the situation, saving time and resources. The tone of the message can be changed to reflect the nature of the message, creating an efficient alternative for call center professionals. John was left speechless seeing this level of versatility from ChatGPT and wanted to implement it right away. However, Ryan made sure John knew about some drawbacks of the chatbot before getting started. Since the bot is trained mostly on data up to 2021, many of the newer events may still need to be discovered by ChatGPT. Even basic stuff like asking about the current date and time is beyond its scope, much like the limited understanding of context despite providing near lifelike solutions to certain problems. Even the accuracy of many responses can be questioned since the AI model is still learning and being developed. There is a section of the public that believes the revolutionary tool can one day replace Google search, but that day seems far-fetched so far because of the variety of issues people keep running into when using ChatGPT. However, ChatGPT poses a lot of promise for the future of AI. From full-scaled automated divisions and organizations to serving as the perfect digital assistant, OpenAI is creating a bot for the future aimed at solving the problems of today with the tools of tomorrow. The ability to carry out a myriad of tasks with minimum manpower will boost productivity at organizations in every sector, thanks to the revolutionary ChatGPT. So, how do you think ChatGPT will benefit your daily life? Are you looking forward to using the bot regularly for work or personal life? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Meet John, a software developer. John develops a program, and now he realizes the program is surrounded by a lot of bugs. John starts exploring a solution. He surfs through the internet, checks programmer communities. Doubting every step of the way, John feels his problem is not solved. Desperate to find the solution, John meets his friend Adam. Adam comes up with an idea of an artificially intelligent and practical solution called the ChatGPT. Adam says ChatGPT has the caliber to systematically resolve all the bugs with an elaborate explanation for every step it makes. ChatGPT is an AI-trained model that works in a conversational way, developed by OpenAI. Fascinated by hearing this, John asks Adam to explain him in detail. After Adam explains that, GPT, aka Generative Pre-Training Transformer, has come a long way. Before the introduction of GPT, natural language processing used to deal with a specific task with large amounts of data. GPT was first released in 2018, which contained 117 million parameters. GPT, GPT-2, and GPT-3. Each one is stronger than the one before it. The main reason why GPT received little attention was that it was more of an idea or test than a finished product. But after the introduction of GPT-2, it gained a lot of attention as it could accurately predict the word that would begin a text. Then they introduced GPT-3, which is a strong language model, achieving translation, question answering, and performing three-digit arithmetic. But ChatGPT stands tall compared to all other achievements of OpenAI. So, how does it work? ChatGPT uses deep learning techniques to generate human-like text. It is based on the machine learning model derived from the class called the Large Language Model. ChatGPT is a byproduct of InstructGPT. InstructGPT introduced a strategy for integrating human feedback into the training process to match model outputs. This innovative technology made ChatGPT exceptional. 
It is trained on the massive data sets of text from the internet and learns from the patterns and relationships between words and phrases. It responds to a prompt by determining the next word based on the context, then repeats the process until a stop condition is met. As a result, ChatGPT can produce various logical responses to various queries and prompts. The most important components of ChatGPT are the transformer model and language model. Coming to the transformer model, it is a neural network architecture designed to process sequential data. It consists of multiple layers of self-attention and a feed-forward network. After the transformer model has processed the input, a decoder generates the output. The decoder uses the context provided by the encoder to generate the response. The model is trained using unsupervised learning and fine-tuned on specific tasks using supervised learning. For successful completion of tasks, it needs pre-trained data. The model first encodes the input text, then converts it to a numerical representation, which can be processed by the model's neural network. This encoding is done using the embedded layer that maps the work. Then comes the language model. ChatGPT is trained as a language model, trained to predict the next word in a sequence given the previous words. The language model intends to produce rational, consistent, and meaningful output. The pre-trained ChatGPT can be tuned for a specific task. So ChatGPT passes a fine-tuning test by answering questions, generating text summaries, or generating text in response to a query. Overall, ChatGPT is a powerful language model with a combination of techniques like deep learning, machine learning, neural networks, and natural language processing. Can ChatGPT change a wide variety of business tasks? John asked. ChatGPT possesses the ability to automate content creation on social media, create chatbot and e-commerce sites, provide medical assistance by acting as a symptom checker, write code, and assist a developer. Thus, ChatGPT can change the working of every industry. Now John can resolve any coding issue without looking into any other resources. But like any other technology, ChatGPT comes with a few limitations that can be its Achilles heel. ChatGPT is capable of developing content up to 2021. It finds difficulty in providing logical reasoning in certain situations. And also, ChatGPT lags in translation, summarization, and sometimes question answering. But above all, ChatGPT has shown remarkable ability by providing accurate answers flawlessly in a creative way in very short periods of time. Whether you're a tech enthusiast, AI expert, or just curious about the new and exciting development, you won't want to miss this discussion about the latest AI sensation. I'm talking about ChatGPT a highly advanced language model based on GPT-3 technology developed by OpenAI. ChatGPT is a state-of-art language generation AI model that has captured the attention of millions of people around the world. It has been trained on a massive data set of text data, making it one of the most largest language models to date. But do you know, a new version of GPT is coming up. It's called GPT-4 and it will support up to 1 trillion parameters compared to 175 billion parameters of GPT-3. Now you might be wondering what are these parameters? So what it means when a user sends a query to the new year version of ChatGPT, then it will process that query with all 1 trillion parameters to deliver a correct and suitable response. Isn't it mind blowing? Not only that, GPT-4 will have more applications than its predecessor GPT-3. The GPT-3 has various applications like text generation, text summarization, automated content generation application and is also being used by various companies like Viable, Fable Studio and Algolia. Aside from its remarkable language handling ability, GPT-4 has the possibility of being utilized for additional functions such as generating images and videos. This is due to the fact GPT-4 is constructed using the transformer architecture, which has demonstrated effectiveness in multiple machine learning assignments, including computer vision. Psychologist and cognitive scientist Gary Marcus said that he can guarantee that GPT-4 will blow the minds. He also mentioned that GPT-4 will totally eclipse chat GPT as it has more parameters and is being trained with more data. However, the CEO, Sam Altman, debunks false information surrounding the company's upcoming chat GPT-4. Altman said that he did not have an actual AGI, that is an artificial general intelligence that could rival humans in learning and existence. The release of chat GPT and other AI-powered chatbots had has a major impact on Google search business. 
With the New York Times reporting that it prompted Google's management to declare state emergency referred to as Code Red. GPT-4, with its improved complexity and quicker response time, has the potential to enhance communication by making it more natural and accurate. For instance, short sentence responses from a chatbot can reduce the likelihood of people clicking on ads. This AI technology could bring about a major transformation in the economy. Google employees have been assigned the task of developing AI products with GPT-4 that can match the capability of GPT-3, such as its capability of generating art, music, and other visuals that OpenAI is currently capable of. Microsoft has invested $3 billion into the OpenAI and is reportedly in discussion to invest an additional $10 billion as reported by the New York Times. The paper also stated that the release of GPT-4 is expected to take place in the first quarter of 2023. Matt McLevain, a venture capitalist with knowledge of GPT-4, hinted that the new system may possess multimodal capabilities, which refers to the capability of functioning in various modes such as text, images, and sounds. The GPT-4 chatbot built using Microsoft extensive data center network has the potential to be similar to ChatGPT, generating only text or it could be incorporate both text and images. However, Sam Altman has cautioned not to set expectations too high. So at this point, it is difficult to say with certainty what GPT-4 will look like and what it will be capable of. So what do you think about ChatGPT-4? Do let us know in the comment section below. So we'll start with the first tip that is change your dashboard appearance so for that we'll move to chat gpt and you could change the desktop appearance or dash to code appearance of chat gpt you can customize your dashboard by going to settings and choosing a new theme or layout so for settings you will go here and in general you can just select the theme that is light you can change it to dark system theme or light theme so these are the options you can use to change your dashboard appearance so this can help you create a more comfortable and personalized working environment for example you can change the color scheme and you can also change the font size also and you can generally change the font size by just zooming in the window and the second tip we have is switch on beta features so we are moving back to chat gpt and here you can see the beta features so for that we'll go in settings and beta that is custom instructions try a new feature that lets you share anything you would like chat gpt to consider across its responses so we have switched on these beta features the plugins try a version of chat gpt that knows when and how to use third party plugins that you enable the code interpreter that is a version of chat gpt that knows how to write and execute python code and can work with file uploads Try asking for help with data analysis, image conversions, or editing a code file. And these files not persist beyond a single session. So these are the plugins or the beta features that we have turned on and we are using them. And in chat GPT-4, GPT-4 you could see that is code interpreter beta and the plugins beta. They both are available for us. So this was the second tip that is switch on the beta features and you can use them. That is, you can toggle on beta features to try out new and experimental features. If you like trying out new features, you can switch on beta features. They are experimental features that are still being tested. Keep in mind that they might not always work perfectly. And the next is, change the tone of your writing. That is, you can ask ChatGPT, can you rewrite any sentence in a more formal way? So, now we will ask a prompt to ChatGPT. That is, can you rewrite this in a more formal tone and what we can ask is that could be hey how are you okay so we'll ask this so you could see that the chat gpt has changed the tone of the sentence or the imperative you were asking that is hey how are you now greetings how do you find yourself today so this is a more formal tone and you can ask chat gpt for more such responses that is give me more such responses so you can change the tone of the sentence that is you could give any sentence or any imperative or any language to chat gpt and you can ask for any tone that could be emotional that could be funny tone or that could be sarcastic tone so chat gpt would reply with the particular tone so this was our third tip and now moving on 
will see the fourth tip that is use chat gpt for quick learning so you can ask can you explain the basics of anything that could be the simple biology concepts the solar system and you can use chat gpt for quick learning that is for instance you could ask any prompt that is here we will ask chat gpt that teach me how to write hello world in python so you can see that chat gpt responded that is showed writing a hello world program in python is quite straightforward due to python simplicity and here's how you can do it that is print hello world and in this code it has given you some sentences so you can just read them and understand how the code works that is print is a built-in python function that outputs specified information to the screen then the text that is hello world that is an inverted commas is a string which is a type of data representing text then the parentheses that are used to enclose the arguments of the function so when you run this program it will give the output of the text that is hello world to the console so this was our fourth tip and moving on now we have our fifth tip that is view the plugin store so now chat gpt has many plugins that is we will create a new chat and in gpt4 you could just click on plugins so currently no plugins are enabled and this is the plugin store so the developers are developing plugins so you could use them and be more productive and add more features to the chat gpt so you could see that is ai pdf that is super fast interactive chats with pdfs of any site complete with page references for fact checking ask your pdf chat with pdf expedia notable link reader so these are the plugins that you could use and this comes with the gpt4 version that is the paid version so you could enable any plugin and you can write any prompt and the chat gpt will respond to it now moving on to the next step that is tip 6 use the web browsing feature so with gpt4 and with the beta versions you get a feature to search with bing or to browse with bing that is not available for my account or for my area so this is the new tip you can use it if you have the paid version and if you are accessible for the beta version of browsing with bing so this was our next tip and moving on we will see our seventh tip that is templatize useful prompts so you can ask can you create a 10 minute full body workout using some kind of dumbbells or a barbell roll and save this prompt for future use you can also templatize useful prompts for instance you can also ask can you create a menu or to-do list and save this prompt for future use so we'll see a quick example that would be create a 10 minute full body workout and that would be using so you could see that the chat gpt has given us a templatized routine so it's a quick high intensity bubble workout that you can complete in about 10 minutes that is bubble deadlifts then bubble squats bubble overhead press bubble rows bubble bench press so for that you also need to have bench press also and the note is remember the key to this workout is intensity and form not necessarily the weight used okay so this is how you can templatize useful prompts and moving on the next step we have is summarize text that is you can paste a long article and ask chat gpt to convert it or summarize in few sentences for example you can paste a long article so i'll show you how we can do that we will just search for simply learn articles so we'll use any article we'll just copy it and give this to chat gpt that is we we'll paste it and ask it can you summarize this article five sentences so you know that this prompt will just summarize the whole article into five sentences and this is the feature of chat gpt to summarize anything 
and in a very concise manner and this was our tip 8 and moving on the next tip we have is analyze your writing pattern that is can you you can ask chat GPT, can you analyze my writing style and generate a paragraph mimicking it that is you can give it any text or chat that you have done you can just copy that chat and give that as a prompt to chat GPT and you can then write a prompt that can you analyze my writing style and generate a paragraph by making it on any topic so the chat GPT will analyze your writing pattern and will mimic your style and you can also ask it to act as a famous person like you can ask chat GPT to act like Elon Musk and give your thoughts on AI so here we will ask chat GPT that is act as Elon Musk and give your thoughts on AI so you could see that it has stated that artificial intelligence holds immense potential for human advancement it's essentially digital super intelligent and can go beyond a human intelligence but it is not saying that it can perfectly act as Elon Musk or it can directly speak to Elon Musk but it can provide a perspective based on his public statements on the topic of artificial intelligence so the chat GPT has analyzed all its statements that are present that is GPT-4 has some browsing features so it has analyzed all the statements and on behalf of that it has given us the result and now moving on to the next tip that is act as an examiner so you can ask can you check this essay for grammatical errors you can ask it to check your project or even grade your homework so as we have copy pasted the article you can copy paste your if you want to check your code or debug your code you can just give it to chat gpt and it will give you the suggestions or it will point out some errors and can give you a perfect code or you can just ask him to get some grammatical errors in your article or essay so this was the 10th tip that is act as an examiner and now the next is format your outputs so you can give any data to chat gpt and ask him to format this into tables and you can ask him to add some columns to the tables that would be monday tuesday wednesday and you can ask him to prepare a to-do list or something like that so you can format your outputs chat gpt will respond to that so for that we'll just give it a prompt to chat gpt that is format the days of week in a table and days put days in column so let's see uh, so you could see that it has given us and it has given all the days in one column so you have to correct your prompts and rewrite your prompts and see what chat gpt is responding with those prompts so you have to be concise and be conscious and just regenerate your prompts so now moving on to a next tip that is tip number 12 that is generate to-do list you can say i need to do grocery shopping finish a report and call my friend today and can you create a to-do list for me so chat gpt can create to-do list just tell it what task you need to complete and it will create a to-do list for you you can just you just have to give it a prompt and the next tip we have is explain it to a child so this is you can ask can you explain how a rocket works to a five-year-old you can ask chat gpt to explain complex concepts in simple terms just say explain it to a child followed by the concept so for example you can also ask that can you explain quantum physics to a child so we will just try this prompt that is explain quantum physics to a child so this will give you so you could see that the chat gpt has given the answer that is absolutely there's a very simple way to explain quantum physics to a child and it has given a lego books example you can build a castle a spaceship or a whole city so this is how you can use this prompt that was the tip number 13 that is explain it to a child then the next step we have is share your chat 
thread links. So after having a productive conversation with ChatGPT, you can share this conversation by clicking on the share button and sending the generated link to your colleagues. This is a great way to collaborate with others. For instance, if you are working on a project with a team, you can share the link to a chat thread so everyone can see the conversation and contribute. So I will show you how you can do it. That is, this is the share button, share a chat and you can just copy the link and send it to anyone and you can collaborate with them. And now moving on to a next tip that is tip number 15 that is export data to mail. If you want to export a chat, you can click on the export button and enter your email address. You will receive a copy of the chat in your inbox. This useful feature is used if you want to save a record of your conversation or if you need to share the information with someone who doesn't have access to chat GBT. So I will show you how you can do it. So simply you have to go here, click on settings and go to data controls and here is your option that is export data so just click on export confirm export and the successfully exported data you should receive an email shortly with your data and now moving on we will see another tip that is organize your chat history so you can organize your chat history that is you can edit it and you can name anything that is tips for chat GPT. So this is how you can organize your chat history. And now moving on, now we'll see the next step that is go minimalist. So what do you understand by minimalist is you can just close this sidebar. So this is the minimalist options here. You can just use the chat GPT here. So in settings, you can choose a minimalist theme which will remove any unnecessary elements from your dashboard, leaving only with the essentials. And if you prefer a cleaner look, you can go minimalist and this removes any unnecessary elements. And you can delete all your history. That is, in settings, you can find the delete all history button. Clicking this will erase all your previous chats and for privacy reasons, you might want to delete your chat history. You can do this by going to your settings and selecting delete all history. So this was our tip number 18 that is delete all your history. So we'll just go to settings, data controls and here we have chat history and training that is turned on. If you will turn off, it will just turn off and it will also act as an incognito mode. And here you can clear all the chats. This will delete all the history. And the next tip we have is describe images and the next is summarize YouTube videos. So this is available with the beta features of Bing. That is, you can just write, describe image and paste any image link here. So the chat GPT will describe the image for you. And if you want to like know about any YouTube video, so you can just write describe YouTube video and then paste the link and it will describe the YouTube video for you. And that is available with the beta feature of browsing with Bing. And if that is available with you, and currently that is not available with me, you can, like if you, if the feature is available with you, that is the beta feature, you would be able to see here, that was the beta feature. And you can also go into settings and beta and check out if the feature is available for you or not. Now, We'll start with a chat GPT to automate our Excel and we have some Excel files. I will upload them in the link with the GitHub. So you can freely download them and you can also try this project with those files. And here we are with the chat GPT. So now we are on the chat GPT website and here you can see that they said try chat GPT option and when you click it, we will be redirecting to the chat GPT, the chat box. And before that, I will show you the home page. It's showing us the samples, what we can do with the chat GPT, the methods, and there's the collect demonstration data and train a supervised policy, like how it's trained, how OpenAI has trained the chat GPT and its limitations. They have mentioned all the things here, iterative deployment, and moving on now we'll log in to our chat gpt 
I will log in with my Google account. Tell us about you and this is my name and he's asking my phone number. So I will get this blurred so you guys won't be seeing my phone number, okay? He's asking for the code. I'm waiting for the code. After entering the OTP, you would be directed to this page that is ChatGPT. And this is the feed box where you can write any query in the simple natural language that would be English. And the ChatGPT would answer your questions. And if we talk about ChatGPT, a uh, little bit information about ChatGPT that it's an AI powered chatbot that has been developed by OpenAI. And the chatbot understands natural language and responds in a human-like manner. It is based on GPT 3.5, which is a language model. And the chatbot was unveiled as a prototype on November 30, 2022. While announcing the chatbot, OpenAI wrote on its announcement page that we have trained a model called ChatGPT, which interacts in a conversational way. The dialogue format makes it possible for ChatGPT to answer follow-up questions, admit its mistake, challenge incorrect premises and reject inappropriate requests. So now we will talk about the ChatGPT. So ChatGPT is an AI powered chatbot that has been developed by the artificial intelligence and it's been researched by the company OpenAI and the chatbot understands natural language and responds in a human like manner. It is based on GPT 3.5 which is a language model. The chatbot was unveiled as a prototype on November 30, 2022. While announcing the chatbot, OpenAI wrote on its announcement page that we have trained a model called ChatGPT, which interacts in a conversational way. The dialogue format makes it possible for ChatGPT to answer follow-up questions, admit its mistake, challenge incorrect premises, and reject inappropriate requests. So this is ChatGPT, and it's been buoying all the developers around the globe. So now we'll start with automating Excel with the help of ChatGPT and with the help of Python language. So first we will create a folder and see the Excel files with which we will use Python and with the help of ChatGPT, we will automate them. So first we'll create a folder for our project and we'll create in Python projects and name it as automate Excel using ChatGPT. And inside this, we will open the command prompt. And now we'll open any IDLE so that we'll write a request to chat GPT and he'll answer us with the suitable code and that code will copy paste into our IDLE and run it. If it gives any error, we will copy paste the error same to the chat GPT and as I know, he answers them. So here we will open our IDLE and for that we are writing a command that is code space period and that will open our IDLE that is Visual Studio Code. Now we have opened our IDLE and first we'll create a file here or first we'll see our Excel files on which we will do the automation and for that we'll get back to our folder and here we have the number folder in which we have two files that is CSV files, phone number and phone number two and other we have the sales folder and in that we have the date of the sales of the year 2022 
so we will use these files sales and the number so we'll cut them and get to a folder and inside the number file no uh, we'll start with sales first we'll do the automation with the sales files so we'll open the sales folder and inside that we'll create a file that would be the py file and the first automation we would be doing is concatenating all the files in a single excel file we have the files from january to december that is the sales files so we'll concatenate them and ask the chat gpt to write the code to concaten sorry to concatenate all these so for that we'll name the file as concatenate only Nate underscore data dot py so now we'll give the command to the chat gpt so here is a chat gpt and here we will write a command for it that would be i have 12 excel files and i want to concatenate them and we'll also mention the name named january spelling of january is this only but we'll check with the file january and then we have february and moving on so on we have till december so we have all these 12 files and now we will command him to use python to concatenate the data inside the 12 excel files into one file So this is a command and it's in the simplest natural language that is the English language. So we'll just press enter. Okay, it shows us that an error occurred if the issue occurs. So for this thing, we'll just copy the open link and paste it here and open it. As the chat GPT is seeing a huge traffic, sometimes it shows these errors so he's very fingers whether we are a robot or not so we will agree with the chat gpt and answer its questions here it's asking again okay now we are clear with the chat gpt and we'll paste a command here and press enter and here you can see that it has started answering our question that you can use the pandas library in python to read in the data from each of the excel files and use the concat function to combine the data from all the files into one data frame here's an example of how you want to use okay he's going in a very right manner and he has imported pandas and then created a data frame and using the for loop he is going through all the months reading the excel file and appending ok done and result he has concatenated but he has not created the excel file where we can see all the data and he has also not printed it so what we want so first we'll see what does this code do as i have seen so it will concatenate but it has not created the excel file in which we can see all the data so we have copied the code we'll paste it here save it and run it and most important thing you have to import the pandas library and if you have not installed it please install it in the command prompt with the 
command pip install pandas or you can use it in the terminal okay it has not found the january.xls okay so j and u a r y Perhaps menu you will see what error it expects we'll save this and run once again so we'll just copy the error and write it back to chat gpt and see how does it respond okay is seeing is indicating that the pandas library is unable to find the excel file you are trying to read in based on the error message look like the files are not located in the same directory as the python script okay we'll see that but we have the python script and the library in the same folder yeah concatenate dot py and we'll check once again here it's for data dot py yeah they are in the same folder and why we have this error okay so so the error is we have opened our ideally in the automated excel using chat gpt folder and currently we are in sales folder so it is not recognizing the directory so what we'll do we'll copy all these files copy the sales files and paste it here now now we'll run the port that chat GPT provided us okay uh yeah it has run successfully it's good successfully okay we'll try once again we'll kill the terminal save it and run it again now we'll see yeah it has executed successfully uh but the thing is it has not converted it into a single excel file for that we'll write you forgot to create the concatenated file as we also haven't mentioned in our command specifically so we have to be specific with our commands also let's see yeah after concreting the data frame to export to a excel file we can just write this command and index equal to false yeah okay and he's giving all the explanations so you can just read them you are correct i apologize for the oversight to create a new excel file that contains second container data you can use the to underscore excel method of the data frame here is an example of how you could do this okay you create a new excel file named container underscore data dot excel sx in the same directory as your python script and it will contain the concatenated data form from all of the original excel file you could also use a to underscore csv method to save the data frame in csv format yeah we can do that also okay we'll make the xlsx file and just beneath it okay yeah uh, yeah t c part two okay uh, we don't need any path we'll just do it here only okay 
yeah, result dot to Excel. And then let's go data dot XLSX. So we'll save this and run it. And it's showing that it has executed successfully. And yeah, outside the sales folder, we'll close it. You can see that it has created the concatenated underscore data dot xlsx. So for that, we'll move here. Yeah, it has created it here. We'll open it. And first, I will show you what these files contain. So every file have the entry of around thousand. Every file has thousand entries. So the concatenated file should have around twelve thousand. So this is the concatenated underscore data. And if we go beneath, yeah, we can see two thousand. and it's yeah it says it has concatenated all the data so yeah chat gpt responded and we have to precise with the commands what we are writing in english as it has not mentioned to convert it into excel file now when we have written it again it has done that now moving on we will do the second automation and for that we'll move back to our ideally and the next automation we would be doing would be that we will be using the sum and the average function to all the files that is from January to December files and we'll use sum and average function. I will show you where we'll use. So it's concatenated data. So we'll open the August file. And here you can see the quantity in the H column. So we'll average down the quantity. So what is the average per customer? And in the J column, we have the total cost. So we'll add all the cost in all the files. This is the August file from January to December. We will do in column match the average for the quantities and column J will do the sum of the total amount per customer and we'll get it printed at the last column that would be we have the thousand entries it's going till H1001 so we would get it printed on H1002 and the sum we would get it printed on j1002 okay so moving on we'll close these files we will get back to a chat gpt and give him a command that i have 12 excel files and we'll tell him that we have named them january then we have february then we have till December <coughs> and now we want you to use Python to apply the sum formula the sum formula and the average formula so the sum formula would be applied from j2 to j1001 we'll see okay we have closed file yeah but i remember some formula from j2 to j1001 okay and the average function and now we want him to use the average formula from H2 to H1001.
okay and that would be in all the excel files and we want him to write the results in the cells and that would be j1002 and h1002 respectively so we have to be precise with the commands and we have an error here uh, that is done and yeah it's all done now we'll just give this command to chat gpt and see how it answers use the pandas library in python to read uh, okay and perform the sum and average calculations good and then write the results back to the same file here is an example of how you could do this yeah we are writing in the same file okay we are importing pandas as pd and running a loop for all the months we have read all the excel files one by one and we are taking the cell one, one, one and i location okay and doing the sum and doing the mean of the h column yeah it's good excel yeah i think it would do a job so we'll copy this and create a new file and name it as sum.py and inside this we will paste the code that our gpt has provided us and we'll run this and it has executed successfully okay no uh we got an error that is in fact Okay. okay okay it has made the mistake okay and got it okay let me just see what query we wrote i have 12 excel files named january every two this summer and use python to apply the sum formula from j2 to j1001 and the average formula from h2 to h1001 in all the files and write the results okay done uh we would be a little specific in the cells j1002 and okay 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 yeah we'll once again submit it if we didn't get okay yeah now he has used the open or excel library that's good yeah that would be working for us let's see what he will provide to us okay she active and okay okay yeah think yeah uh, it can serve the purpose but first we'll run it so he is giving us the explanation for what he has written this code that is this code will apply the sum formula to the range j2 to j1001 and the average formula to the range h2 to h1001 in all the excel files the results will be written in j1002 and h1002 respectively it is important to note that this code will overwrite the original file so that it's recommended to make a backup okay we don't need that and we have backup in the sales folder also so you can also use the read underscore excel and Two underscore Excel function from panel and Arena and okay. So we'll try this code. Uh it is not return to import OS. And guys, uh you have to install all these libraries open py excel. I have already installed them. You can search on the browser that open py excel installation python and it would be directed to pypi.com 
that's the official website for the particular libraries and there you can see the command that would be the pip install and the particular command for the module name uh, it is showing that it has run successfully so we'll just see if it has done its job or not and in the april file we have in the h column that is the average of the h column that was the items and in the j column we have the total sum of the amount of the customers yeah the query has run successfully chat gpt has provided us with the perfect code hats off to the jet gpt and moving on now we'll do some other automations and now what we can do uh, we have other files that is phone number and phone number two and what it contains it contains the phone numbers so what we could do is we could add the plus 91 extension that is the country code for india we will ask chat gpt to add the country code plus 91 to both the files so i'll close these files and first we'll copy them and paste in our root directory so we don't get any error and we'll change the slight name instead of hyphen we will add the underscore okay now we'll move back to chat gpt and write a command and these files are csv files not xlsx file Yeah, these are CSV files. Both the files are CSV files. Other files are XLSX files. Okay, so for that, we'll write the command to chat GPT that I have two files uh, with dot CSV extension. and they are named phone underscore number and the second was named phone underscore number underscore two okay so we have told the jet gpt that we have two files and now we'll tell him to use python to add the country code add the country code plus 91 as string prefix and that would be adding as a string prefix else it would only show 91 it won't show plus so we'll see if chat gpt understand that or not as string prefix in both the csv files with column name that was phone okay now we'll just press enter and wait for our chat GPT to answer this query and we'll see how it responds you can use the pandas library to this well okay and the prefix to the phone numbers and and the modified data pathways is all okay hey, then we'll do this okay mm -hmm. okay both the friends now we are waiting and the phone directory it's adding as type string okay it has understood that 
and to CSV. Run this code well. We didn't go through files. Yeah, I think this will work. We have copied the code. This code will read in both CSV files and the plus time and string to the phone numbers and write the modified data back to the CSV files. It's important to note that this will overwrite the original file, so it's recommended to make a backup of the original files. Okay. Uh, you could also use the apply function to add the prefix to the phone number in the column. Okay. So, okay, yeah. Uh, we can do this also with the lambda function. And that's all. This will also do a job. First, we'll see this. And we will create a file for this automation and name it as country code dot py. Okay. And we'll paste the code here and run it for you guys. It's showing that it has executed successfully. Uh, yeah, it has executed successfully. So we'll just go back to our files and see whether they go plus nine one as in prefix or not okay the numbers okay the files code only nine one as the column it's still in the number format it hasn't converted into string format so uh, we'll see the second code also like yeah it has converted x into string Okay, lambda x we'll see whether it's working or not like it has worked uh, and the issue is we have changed the files permission denied okay we have opened a file we'll close it and save save this and run it again now it shows it has executed successfully we'll open the files and now if we see it is showing yeah uh, now it has added two nine ones yeah. uh, so no issues uh, the thing is first we have to transform it into the string format and then we can add plus nine one as a string to that string so chat gpt misses with the slightest implementation of the code now moving on uh, we'll see this command later if you want to see how we can add plus nine one i will tell you how to write that code okay so now moving on we will do another automation and you would be glad to know that chat gpt improves the existing code like uh, in the first automation it has concatenated but it hasn't converted the concatenated file like it hasn't created that file it had created the file when we have written to it that you forgot to create that file so chat gpt it modulates the existing code also and moving on now uh in any okay we'll open the concatenated underscore data dot xlsx and inside this okay we have the product line so what we'll do is we will change the name of the electronic accessories to electronic equipments and home and lifestyle to lifestyle now we'll automate this process and we can do this automation in all the files also from January to December so we'll do that only okay now here we will command is Now we'll command the chat GPT that using Python iterate through 
all the excel files in the directory so we are asking him to iterate to all the excel files in the directory and we will ask him to replace uh, what was the electronic assessors electronic accessories see the spelling is correct or not electronic accessories okay yep electronic accessories with electronic equipments and we'll also ask him equipments okay we'll do equipment only and home and lifestyle we'll choose an yeah and home and lifestyle and we'll change it with only lifestyle okay so using python we are iterating through all the excel files and changing these uh, that would be in each excel file so we have to be specific with a written language and now we'll save the modified workbook in um, we'll create another folder and in that we'll save the files okay save the modified file in the output folder and if the folder is not created we'll ask him to create it okay then create one folder and add it in okay oh, i don't know why i'm saving this so i have written the command i will press enter so that chat gpt can process it and give us the code for that so it's so showing us sorry <laughs> that was showing, showing us. Uh, you can use the OS library to edit to all the Excel files and directory. The pandas library to read in the files and make the changes and the one to save the modified files. Okay, here's an example of how you could do this. Now, here we have imported OS pandas as pd and it has written the code. We'll copy that. This code will iterate to all the Excel files in the current directory, replace electronic accessories with electronic equipment and home and lifestyle with lifestyle in the data frame and then save the modified files in the output folder. If the sorry, if the output folder doesn't exist, the script will create it. You would also use replace function to replace values in the column. Okay. This will iterate through all the cells in each row of the Excel sheet and replace electronic accessories with electronic equipment and home and lifestyle with lifestyle if the cell value is equal to the respective string. Okay, we have copied a code and now we will create a file and name it as iterate.py. We'll paste the code here and run it for you guys the code has been executed successfully now we'll see we'll open all the files not all but yeah we'll open some mm, that was the previous electronic accessories okay so it hasn't changed in this okay 
we will open another file and see if we code the changes in that or not that also states the electronic accessories so it hasn't done its job so we'll move back to gpt and use this code if it functions else we'll write back to the chat gpt Okay. Just a second, I will leave the code in there using the replace and fill in accidents. Okay, so for here we have to import the OS done load underscore workbook and for that we'll import this and run it and close these files now we'll see if we quote our solution or not no it's showing electronic accessories and home and lifestyle so chat gpt doesn't quote the code to change them so we'll ask him another time and with a different language this time Hmm. Also, I don't think it has created the output folder. It has. Oh, sorry. I'm really sorry. What I have done is my mistake. Those were the original files. And we have the product line here and we have electronic accessories here and that should be equipments okay uh, we have electronic accessories and lifestyle let me see my command okay i have asked him to change electronic accessories with electronic equipment and home and lifestyle with lifestyle so it has changed only lifestyle we'll see okay okay uh the e here is small we'll update that in the code you can write this back to chat gpt also but yeah first we'll do this and what are you showing what has executed successfully in the output folder we have the December accessories mm, that's it the capital E okay 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 so this code is giving us error 
we'll see the last code we'll copy that and try to use this close the terminal and run it again it has executed successfully now we'll see the file whether it has changes or not it has not now we'll ask the chat gpt what have you done brother We're using Python iterate through all the Excel files in the directory and replace electronic accessories with electronic equipment and home and lifestyle with lifestyle. Okay, in each Excel file, save the modified modified file in the output and the okay. Okay, we'll ask the same thing once again to him. And with this electronic accessories. Oh sorry. and save the modified file the output folder and get a folder if it doesn't exist okay Okay. Mm, this is the same code as the above one. Okay, we'll see once again. To close these files. has executed successfully now we'll open it and now we can see that it has changed to electronic equipment electronic equipment yeah now it has executed successfully maybe there would be an error with us while copying it as we have also created the output folder but we forgot to see in that folder maybe that could be the error from our side now we are done with the changing of the column names uh the cell names that was electronic accessories to electronic equipments and home and lifestyle to lifestyle now we'll do the next automation for that first we'll open an excel file uh, this was in the output folder you get back to our main directory and open the file july and here here we will filter the excel file for gender that is we'll select gender as female and with the unique values in column city and we'll extract the data from column a to q that would be the whole data and for each unique city value we'll create a new excel file for each city and that will contain data only for that city and for females only and after that we'll save this file in a folder named city so we'll give this command to chat gpt and here you can also specify the module you want chat gpt to use for the particular command here we will be commanding the chat gpt to use the pandas module 
and for that we'll write the command node command in the natural language we'll give this command to the chat gpt and for that we'll write using python and pandas filter the okay we will just pick a single excel file or we can pick the concatenated file that is concatenated underscore data filter the concatenated underscore data dot excel sx excel file and that would be for gender female and by the unique values in column city we first will give the command by the unique values in the column city and after that we want to extract the data from column a to q that is the whole sheet extract the data from the column a to q and for each unique city value for each unique city value now we will extract the data and now we will create a new excel file so for that also we will give the command to chat gpt and we will write create a new excel file and that would be for each city ok so we will write create a new excel file for each city containing data only for that city and for females okay and save this file in the city folder and if it's not been there chat gpt can create the folder for that also okay city folder and naming the each file with the city name okay naming each file after the corresponding city okay now if the city folder that is we have written the small city okay if the city folder doesn't exist then create it before saving the files okay now we have given this command to the chat gpt and it has responded us with you can use the pandas library as we have already mentioned to use that to read in the concatenated underscore data dot xlsx file and filter the data for gender female Group the data by the unique values in the city column and extract the data from the specified columns for each group and here is an example so we have put the code we'll wait till chat gpt continues
and we can see that the chat GPT has completed and we will copy this code city open female I don't care to see limited channel called female city we make the directory for city and for city group in female data root group by okay city and you could also use the as in method to filter the data frame for female gender okay first we'll see this and for that we will create filter dot py and run the code it has been executed successfully so now we'll see that the city folder has been created or not i'm not able to see the city folder okay it's been created so we'll see okay <clears throat> it's been created and it's still empty so we'll give time okay and we quote an error okay okay we will pass this error to chat gpt first and after that we'll see What's wrong with this? On um, your so the error message you're saying is indicating that the column name specified in the list are not present in the data frame. It's likely that the actual column names in the data frame are different than the ones you specified in the list. Okay, we'll just see the list that is concatenated data go back and see that is a2 okay it's still r okay we made a little mistake here so we'll just change our command yeah this is it and instead of q now we'll write r and save and submit now we'll see what it would what it would generate for us we'll close this Okay, this one will run the following fields in Excel files. Filter the data for females. Uh, group the data by the unique values in the city column. Great. And extract the data from the column A to R for each unique city name and then create a new Excel file for each city containing data only for that city and for females. Files will be saved in the city folder. Naming each file after the corresponding city. Okay. It's done. Now we'll copy this code and paste it here and see whether this code works for us or not so it's been executed successfully now we have moved to the city okay it's executing so we'll give time to the code let it do it so yeah it's been executed successfully okay so there were three cities that was mandalay naipai to and yangon and if i show you the data you could see there are three cities and it has created the excel files with the name of the cities only the unique cities 
and it has extracted the data for the gender female now we'll see those files close this and back in the city folder could see the Mendeley city and the data is just for the females so this automation works well with chat gpt now moving on we will do one more automation and that would be to use python to identify what is the count of each payment mode so for that i will just get you aware of the payment modes in our sheet and we'll do this automation on the concatenated data sheet only so this is the payment column <clears throat> and you can see the mode of payments that is e-wallet cash credit card and these are repeating so we'll use python to identify what is the count of each payment mode from column m column n sorry and that is from this sheet only and then we'll create a new sheet and name it as count.xlsx and write the count against each payment method so we'll give this command to our chat gpt and ask him to write the code for our automation so we're writing use python to identify use python to identify what is the count of each payment method from column and the column was n from column n and that was in concatenated concatenated Nated underscore data dot xlsx sheet and create a new sheet <clears throat> named count dot xlsx and write the count against each payment method okay <clears throat> now we have given this command to our chat jpt and we'll see what it offers to us we can use the pandas library to read okay that's the same value counts function to get the count of each payment method okay and you can use the two excel method to the data frame to write the count to a new sheet okay that's good and he has imported the pandas library and created the df variable in which he has read the concatenated file and used counts function with the payment method and okay the column name is payment not payment method i think it would generate an error for us so it's python of each one method from column n and we will specify column m and that is named payment as it has used payment method here you can see that it has used the column name as payment method so we will specify this we have to be very specific with our commands these automations for simple tasks you can use simple language like you know complex sentences or you have to mention every detail but for these automations you have to use them now our chat GPT is working with this and most probably he will deliver us with the perfect code I hope so okay uh it has read and the value gone and it has exported
dot reset you would also use the group by function to group the data by the payment method and use the size function to get the one over each payment method okay okay we'll see this oh. and here we will create a file as count.py and in this file we'll paste the code delivered us by the chat gpt we have executed it it's being executed we'll wait for that it's being executed successfully so we have back to our folder and we have to look for well count file huh? yeah count file okay is this the no it's the component okay yeah it's showing us the mode of payments that is e-wallet cash credit card and the number of usage yeah four four eight thousand three twelve yeah it's twelve thousand that was the whole entry of the concatenated underscore data dot xlsx so we have done with this automation and now we'll do one last automation and first we'll close all these files okay and moving back to our chat gpt and now we'll do we'll rename all the 12 excel files that was january february to december and we'll add the word uh, car sales just before the month name that would we will just add the prefix before the month name and for that we'll give the command to the chat gpt in the natural language and here only we'll change it in the main directory only as we have the copy of all these files so for this we'll write the command use python to rename all the 12 excel files named january february until december okay and that is present in my directory and what we have to do is we have to add uh, the word we'll add car sales okay parcels in front of each in front of each file name okay so what it will do is car sales underscore january car sales underscore february and so on so we'll wait for the chat gpt you can use the OS library to iterate through all the Excel files in a directory and then use the OS to rename function. Okay, to rename the files. Here is an example of how you could do this. Go to OS and we have the months. Okay. This code will iterate through all the Excel files in the current directory and add car cells in front of each file name. And those files would be those only, the months. And good. It's using the Glow module. And you could also use the Glow module. Okay. That's the second code. It's the easy one. Okay. 
but we'll go with OS first and get back to our ideally and name the file as rename.py and here we'll paste the code and run it it's been executed we'll move back yeah you could see that car sales have been added to all the files and with that we have done with our automations and if you want you can also submit your code to chat gpt and ask it to add comments to your code so that it could explain you what that line does or what that function does it would explain very tediously and if you want you can also try chat gpt to automate many office tasks you can automate powerpoint for that and do many more tasks with chat gpt on that note we present you postgraduate program in ai and machine learning elevate your professional journey by enrolling in this ai and ml course presented through a partnership between purdue university and ibm hurry up and enroll now Find the complete course details from the link mentioned in the description box below. During our childhood, we have heard the fictional stories of robots taking over various household courses, making the lives of humans easy peasy. But if you are not aware, then these fictional stories are turning into reality. Though not in the form of physical robots, but yes, in the form of computer programs and apps with the help of artificial intelligence and machine learning technologies. Confused? Let me introduce to you to ChatGPT, a pre-trained model that interacts with user in a conversational way. ChatGPT is founded by OpenAI and the model is based on supervised and reinforcement learning. So are you excited to know more about ChatGPT? ChatGPT has various applications in various domains. In this video, we are going to see the application of ChatGPT in the SEO domain. Also, we are going to discuss how ChatGPT will play an important role in search engine optimization. So here is a question for you. ChatGPT is based on which of the following GPT models created by OpenAI? Option 1. ChatGPT 1, Option 2, ChatGPT 2, Option 3, ChatGPT 3, and Option 4, none of the above. Let us know your answer in the comment section below. And if your answer is correct, you will get a heart from Simply Learn. So, to begin with, let's open ChatGPT. We need to go to new chat, which is already open here. Let's start by, we will try to demonstrate an SEO optimized uh, blog in this demonstration. So let's get some keyword ideas for the blog. So before that, let's choose what kind of blog we want to create. I really love traveling. So let's try to create a travel blog. So for the travel blog, we'll find some good keywords. So here you can see we are getting some suggestions for the travel destinations. We can choose any of them. Okay, so here we got around uh, seven of the results. So let's try to get something for Japan. Suggest so me good keywords to create a blog on Japan.
okay so what i understand from this is we are just getting few of the random keywords okay so it is it is showing that these keywords cover a range of topics related to japanese culture history food and more uh out of these i guess we can start with the places here are few places like mount fuji tokyo and everything so let's try to create a blog on top 10 places to visit in japan Okay, so we are getting places to visit in Japan. Let's try to get keywords related to top 10 places in Japan. Okay, so we are getting some of the keyword recommendations and it is also su suggesting that by using these keywords, our content will be more dis discoverable and it will be easy for rank, for, uh, for, 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 search, for, for search rankings. Write me a blog on top 10 places to visit in Japan. So the idea is we will try to write a blog and after which we will try to uh, uh, optimize the blog with respect to the keyword top 10 places to visit in Japan. And we will also uh, see whether all the SEO practices can be easily applicable or not using chat GPT. So here you can see we are getting a blog with the introduction with top 10 places and probably what I expect is to get a good conclusion out of it. Also like uh, uh, chat GPT provides you the facility so that you can reduce the length of your content, the textual content, the blog or article or anything you want uh, to several number of words. Like if this blog has 2000 or 5000 words, you can just ask chat GPT to reduce it to 2000 or 1000 words also. So here you can see that before when we searched, there were only one liners about these destinations, these places in Japan. And now we are getting a detail about all the 10 places.
definitely we have targeted this blog for the uh, keyword top 10 places to uh, visit in japan however we can ask for some more keywords to increase its reach suggest few more relevant keywords for my blog okay so we are getting some more keywords here For any blog, it is really important to have a very good title. So we will try to implement a catchy title for this blog. As a good title helps the user to click on your content, and it uh, increases the possibility to get more and more traffic. So here you can see the title is completely keyword optimized. Our keyword is top 10 places to visit in Japan. And here I can see most of the suggestions, most of the suggested titles have the keyword top 10 places or top 10 destinations, which is somewhat similar to what we are expecting. Add the best suitable title in my blog. Okay, so we are getting something different here. The ultimate guide to Japan's hidden gems. 10 places you can't miss. Okay, so here we got title for a blog. But here we can see there is a slight limitation that it is suggesting the title, but it is not adding it to our blog and representing it again to us. Optimize my blog for the keyword top 10 places to visit in Japan. Top 10 places to visit in Japan with an optimized title Okay, so we have to do it manually. It's not able to add the title in the blog. Optimize blog for the keyword top 10 places to visit in Japan. Okay, so here it is showing the relevant suggestions. So maybe there is a slight ambiguity in the query. That's why it's not representing us the correct results.
we are going to optimize our blob using all these factors. Again, these are the suggestions. Let's try to implement these one by one. Add headings h1, h2 in the above block. So yes, we are getting the updated versions having h1 and h2. And yes, you can see easily that the title of the blog is in h1 and the rest are maybe in h2. H1 and H2 tags are some of the practices in the on-page optimization, which uh, uh, helps the search engine bots to understand that this is something important, really important uh, for the page. And they pick up these hints for uh, getting your uh, page rank. So yes, it is implemented. Okay, so our blog is completed with H1 and H2 implementations. Let's try to get some interlinks for this blog. Interlinks have their own importance as interlinking your blog with other pages of your website or your blogging pages. This will help you to gain the traffic from other pages to your blog and uh, uh, putting the traffic from your blog to other pages of your website. Also, it helps the search engine bots to understand the crawl structure, understand the website structure also. So, suggest me few interlinks for the above blog. So yes, definitely these are the relevant and uh, expected links we are getting. So if you have any of these uh, blog pages in your uh, website or if you have created any of these blogs earlier, do interlink it.
which of the above can I use in my blog so definitely there are a number of suggestions but if you want to choose one how can you pick the one let's see if we get the uh, relevant thing for this okay So it is not only suggesting that we can use all of the above, but it is also showing the significance of interlinking. Okay, moving ahead. So till now we have optimized our blog for a keyword top 10 places. We have tried to get uh, some of the keywords relevant to the uh, top 10 places to visit in Japan. We have added headings and we have uh, tried to get some of the good interlink suggestions to add interlinks in our blogs, which are some of the good practices of the on-page optimizations. So next moving ahead in another on-page optimization technique is let's try to get a cover image for this blog. So by, by getting a cover image suggestions, we will try to implement the image optimization technique for our blog page. Okay, so it is showing uh, some of the suggestions related to the diversity of the country, panoramic view of Tokyo skyline, the beautiful image of Kyoto's traditional temple, Mount Fuji, Hiroshima's Peace Memorial Park. So we will try to pick one and uh, see if we are getting any image idea. Let's take for Mount Fuji. Suggest me the image idea for Mount Fuji. So let's see. We have seen in generic for all. Now let's see for this uh, image suggestion specific to Mount Fuji. Okay, definitely it is showing a uh, number of suggestions for the specific Mount Fuji image. So if you are looking to create another blog for Mount Fuji, then these ideas are easy to take up. Optimize the Mount Fuji image for my blog. Here are some tips to optimize the image for Mount Fuji for my blog, which are they're showing that the image should be high resolution, then a clear subject. Definitely, if you have a large image, a large file size, it really gets difficult to load and the page load speed will increase. So if you have a large file size, the image should be compressed without reducing its quality, image quality. We should have descriptive file names and alt tags. Okay. So let's try to get a very good file name and alt tag. Also, we'll try to implement a good caption because adding a caption is very good in the uh, when considered as a user. So get me good image title and alt tag for Mount Fuji image. So uh, there is an importance for alt tag as search engines are the bots. 
they won't able to identify the image directly so alt tags helps the search engines to understand what the image is about so yes it is showing not one but number of suggestions for all the mount fuji recommendations which we got earlier so we will try to choose one and get a caption for it write a good caption for for the image Scenic Fuji Five Lakes Region. So, yes, definitely we're getting suggestions here. I guess this caption is quite long so let's try to reduce it to 40 words reduce the above caption to not even 40 let's do it in 20 20 words okay this one is better Now let's try to get the image if there is any. Choose the Mount Fuji image for my blog. Choose image. It should not. I repeat. Choose the perfect illustration for Mount Fuji image for my blog. So you can see here that it is not choosing any image but it is again providing us the suggestion what we can choose. Again, this is the limitation that it is not showing us any of the image. We will try to put it in another way to get an image. If it really works, we can get it. Okay, so it is not possible to download or get an image representation using chat GPT. We can only get the recommendations to choose the image. And yes, it is showing some suggestions of uns un unsplash pixels or Shutterstock to download the image. So we can re uh, really navigate to these websites and download some of the required image for our blog. So we, we have uh, completed here with the image optimizations. Let's try to get some video ideas because again, having a video is a catchy factor for the users visiting your website or your blog page. Suggest me, suggest video ideas for the above blog. Okay, so we are getting few of the video ideas.
which of the above idea is best match for my blog? Let's try to extract anyone from the above. Okay, so it is completely dependent on the user's choice, what a user wants. So here I'll choose for, again, we will continue with Mount Fuji only. Provide video optimization optimization ideas video optimizations for Mount Fuji video for above blog. Okay, so it, it is showing us some of the suggestions which we, uh, which we can implement for a video. As we do not have any video here, we can just take these recommendations and optimize whatever the video of our choice. So let's take the thumbnail suggestions in our next query. Uh, if it can suggest us a Mount Fuji uh, thumbnail uh, image suggestion, uh, and the video tag suggestion, right? Suggest me good thumbnail idea for Mount Fuji video. Thumbnails have the major impact for any videos. It is the only thing. Uh, I repeat. Thumbnails. Thumbnails are one of the important factors which encourages the user to click on your video and watch the complete video. So definitely having a good thumbnail will help your content to rank. So yes, we have got around 10 of the thumbnail ideas from which we can implement any one uh, as of the video we are having for our blog. So we are done with the thumbnail ideas after which we will get, we will try to get video tags. So for getting video tags, let's get for all of them. Find me video tags for the all of above thumbnail suggestions. Tags are important to help the user to get your videos in the search list like if someone uh, uh, types Mount Fuji in the search box and if the Mount Fuji keyword is or a tag is added to your video tag it is more likely to get searched and appear in the search results and possibly user may click on it So here we have tried to get, uh, try to implement some of the good, uh, some of the important um, on-page optimization practices. Now let's try to get backlinks, which is one of the most famous off-page optimization technique. A 
above block. Okay, so it is showing some of the link suggestions. So basically backlinks are the links which points from other, another website or another web page to your web page or your website. So getting backlink uh, is one of the trust factors in the search engine's eyes that your content is really unique and more of more users wants to read it and uh, share it with another uh, users. So the search engines by, by by these search engines understand that your content is really good and it is worth of ranking so definitely getting a good backlink from a very good authority websites is uh, fruitful for your content so let's try to get which pages on web are suitable to get backlinks for my blog. So here we are getting some of the ideas or suggestions that which pages we can choose to get a backlink. So here is industry specific websites. So if you are writing a travel blog, there should be a travel trip, advi uh, trip advisor like websites. Uh, which are showing more of the trip oriented or bookings related oriented for travel or de uh, destinations there are few of the directories okay government websites which are the tourism websites in our case right now blogging websites and social media platforms which can be relevant to the current scenario which we are using here so let's check how can we get backlinks from the above recommendations for my blog? Okay, guest posting, broken link building. Okay, these are some of the backlink building methods which we are getting so that we can find one and get one of the black ba uh, I repeat so these are some of the backlink building strategies which we are getting in the recommendation so we can implement any of these to get a backlink for our blog Let's choose a specific platform and try to get the recommendations or the ideas to get backlinks for the from the blogging site. So we can implement these ideas and it it may be possible to get backlinks Now that we have got some of the ideas to get backlinks for our blog, let's try to add the catchy metadata for our blog. Metadata like having meta title or meta description, these are the only uh, data which is uh, which is appearing in the search results. As you you have seen that in the search result, the link, the blue link we get 
is the meta title of our blog page or a website page or any page on the web whereas a few lines written below that link is the meta description that we are providing to let the user know that what the blog is exactly about so it is considered to be a good practice to have the targeted keyword in the title as well as in the description so let's try to get one is the it is you optimize meta title and meta description for my blog so we are getting some suggestions here top 10 places to visit in japan discover the best place to visit in japan top 10 destinations definitely we have your top 10 destinations see also we are getting some of the notes that it is good to have meta title less than 60 characters so if, if it is more than 60 character you may get the dot dot part and the title will not be clearly visible in the search result page so let's try to again optimize the meta title and meta description for top 10 places to visit in japan description for the keyword top 10 places to visit in Japan. Okay. So we can use any of the one, the one we have got the recommendation the previously and this one also, both are completely relevant to our content. So one of the technical SEO factor which we are going to see here is getting the URL recommendation. Uh, URLs are the important factor. Uh, it helps the search engine bots to understand about the page as the URL is the first thing search engines may be visiting to come to your page. So, uh, it is a good practice to have the keyword in your URL rather than having some of the abrupt characters like X, A, R, at the rate, these kind of stuffs in the link. So, let's create the URL suggestions suggest me SEO optimized URL for the above blog see so here we are getting top 10 places to visit in Japan which is definitely our blog and as a keyword we are using it to optimize our content and it is placed in the URL so this URL is completely correct also these kind of suggestions are very good for the newbies in the uh, search engine domain as they will definitely understand why and what we are doing to optimize our pages. So next, moving ahead with some of the non-technical aspects which may impact, which may definitely impact to uh, bring the traffic. So let's try to get some of the sharing suggestions like which platforms should I I repeat which sharing options should I add in my blog? So 
so out of the mentioned uh, sharing buttons we can add any of them adding at least three to four sharing buttons is considered to be really good out of which there are many common like facebook is really common then reddit is really very common whatsapp shares are really common twitter shares are really common so you can choose any of these to add it in your blogs Just commenting on my blog impact on traffic source. So here we are taking the suggestion that will this help or not. Again, this is again linked to the backlinks that if we are adding the comment section, someone else may ask for a backlink for their web. And this is again uh, going in symbiotic way. Like if they are asking for a, a backlink for, from your blog, you can even ask from them. So this is the way of or, or a part of a communication to get a backlink as well. Can you find the duplicate? content in above blog so duplicate content is a concept where search engines uh, you you must be aware that search engines are really in love with the unique content so having a duplicate content may really uh, affect your uh, uh, web visibility and it is possible that your page may get dead after a time so plagiarism is not at all allowed uh, when you're creating a content it is not suggested in any case okay so it is not uh, able to uh, chat gpt is not able to identify the duplicate content however uh, it is suggesting us some of the tools like copyscape or site liner to understand if the content we are creating for our blog is duplicate or not and let's get some suggestions how to make content unique just in case if someone is not aware to create a unique content we can get some of the tips here Okay, so we have got some of the suggestions. Also, let's try to uh, see one of the other aspects of technical SEO that is 404 pages. 404 pages are really not are not likely to get searched because I repeat. Let's try to see another aspect of technical SEO. Uh, try to find some 404 pages on the website. So from this, I can understand that though we have not posted any blog link or any uh, internal links that leads to that blog, which we are expecting, this is not the clear idea we are providing. But yes, uh, to find 404 pages, uh, it is not possible for the chat GPT to get one, but we can use uh, some of the tools suggested like uh, Screaming Frog or Google Search Console, where we get the detailed report of the broken links or 404 pages that is the dead pages of our website. So let's wrap up from the uh, view of the technical SEO perspective. Let's consider one of the scenario that we have published this blog and how can we promote this blog to reach more of the relevant audience. 
So, Okay, so we are getting some of the recommendations that we can share our blog on social media, reach to the influencer, uh, add it as a guest post, and link back to this this blog. Email marketing, yes, it is the most trending technique to reach more of the audiences. Paid advertising, commenting, content syndication, yes, Medium and LinkedIn are the very famous platforms for this online communities so you can you can definitely uh, try to be the member of the online communities and forums where you can just put up the link and uh, the uh, members of your niche may definitely visit your uh, content and share it with others also so yes we we have seen that uh, search for as as a perspective of search engine optimization chat gpt is uh, helpful really really helpful to create the in content creation in optimizations and many of the other things today in an era of mobile devices robots and social media content creation is the most effective inbound marketing strategy nearly 40 percent of marketers say content marketing is essential to their marketing strategy and 81 percent say their company views content as a business strategy Original and high quality content can help your company stand out and attract new customers and help your business grow. On that note, welcome to Simply Learn's YouTube channel. Today, we are here with a fantastic video on ChatGPT for content creation, which will help you create some compelling content on your desired topics. So let us understand what is ChatGPT here. Now, content creation can be of any type, such as blogs, podcasts, videos, graphics, and so on. But how do you create high quality content with a few minutes? You need not be worried when we have ChatGPT. Now, even though there are numerous AI writing tools for content creation, ChatGPT stands out from the crowd due to its faster response rate, ease of use, increased productivity, support for multiple languages, and other benefits. Now, let's try to understand what exactly ChatGPT is and how to create content from it. Now, generally, ChatGPT is an open AI trained and developed model that works conversationally. ChatGPT is capable of systematically resolving all bugs while providing detailed explanation for each step it takes. So in simple words, ChatGPT is a tool that creates content for any query. ChatGPT stands out among all the other achievements of OpenAI. So let us now move ahead and understand how does ChatGPT work. Now ChatGPT uses deep learning techniques to generate human-like text, which is based on a machine learning model derived from the large language model class. Now, it is trained on a massive text data sets from the internet and learns patterns and relationship between words and phrases. It responds to a question by selecting the next word based on the context and then repeats the process until a stop condition is fulfilled. So as a result, ChatGPT can logically respond to your queries and commands. So let's see how to create content in ChatGPT. Now, as we already discussed, content creation can be of any type. So for instance, let's take blog. A blog is an online journal or a website where a writer or a group of writers share their views on an individual subject. Now there are a variety of categories for writing a blog. So let's pick one for ChatGPT here. So as you can see, we have navigated into ChatGPT and let us now ask a simple question about food blogging. Now, lately, food blogs are the most popular blogs that everyone wants to write about. So let's find out what ChatGPT has to say about it. Now, you can give any question to ChatGPT and it will answer. So I'm just uh, writing a question here saying how to start a food blogging career. So as you can see, it is uh, generating the answer for us. Uh, wait for it to end. Well, as you can see, it is saying that starting a food blog can be a fun and rewarding way to share your love of food with others. So it is showing us some steps to get started in food blogging career. It is saying choose a niche, choose a name and domain, choose a blogging platform, create your blog, create high quality content and 
so on. So in this way, ChatGPT will automatically generate the response for you based on the questions that you are giving input to it. Next, we will see another question on lifestyle blogs. Now with the world on social media, everyone wants to read more about lifestyle, especially of a famous or a popular uh, entity, what habits they adapt and what to let go of, etc. So let's explore this segment in ChatGPT as well and see what it will show the answer. So let's uh, give the question as how to start lifestyle blogging in India. So it is giving the answer for us guys. So it is saying that starting a lifestyle blog in India can be a great way to share your experiences and knowledge with others who share similar interest. So here are some steps to help you get started. Again, it is giving some uh, important points for us in order to start your lifestyle blogging career. Like choose your niche, choose a name and domain, choosing a blogging platform, create your blog, create high quality content and so on. Chat GPT is truly a fascinating technology changing how we interact with language. It's the result of years of research and development by OpenAI who have trained the model on a massive amount of text data to create a machine that can easily understand and generate human-like text. Imagine you are a digital marketer looking to make a big impact on your next campaign. ChatGPT can help you do that. ChatGPT uses natural language processing or NLP which can assist you in creating compelling human-like copy for your website, social media and email marketing. It can even generate product descriptions and ad copy that is engaging and optimized for search engines. Using ChatGPT will save time and increase your productivity, allowing you to focus on other important aspects of your campaign. And with its ability to generate multiple text variations, you can test and define your messaging to find the perfect tone and language that resonates with your target audience. Get ready to revolutionize your digital marketing game. With the help of this video, you will gain a deeper understanding of how ChatGPT can supercharge your efforts as a content creator or digital marketer. Say goodbye to mundane tasks and hello to a tenfold boost in productivity. Let's dive in. Ever since OpenAI launched ChatGPT, it has been making waves in every field, be it academic, marketing, engineering, or content writing. So here's a little trivia for you. Who are the investors in OpenAI, the company behind the development of ChatGPT? And your options are Option A, Elon Musk and Sam Altman. Option B, Jeff Bezos and Satya Nadella. Option C, Mark Zuckerberg and Larry Page. Option D, Jack Ma and Masayoshi Sun. Drop your answer in the comment section below. On that note, we present you Postgraduate Program in AI and Machine Learning. Elevate your professional journey by enrolling in this AI and ML course presented through a partnership between Purdue University and IBM. Hurry up and enroll now. Find the complete course details from the link mentioned in the description box below. Okay then, let's get started. There are many uses of ChatGPT in digital marketing. Its main USP is smart human sounding content writing. We can command it to write content related to marketing. First, on our agenda is an ad copy. There are various ways to go about it. But we must understand that no matter how much content sounds like humans, it is still a piece of content written by an AI. So you have to give detailed and precise queries to get the best results. Let's start by giving it a basic command like write an ad copy. As you can see, it gave us random ad content. Let's give this query more content like write an ad copy for Simply Learn Digital Marketing Master's course. Now, as you can see, it gave us a more precise ad copy. We can also ask to make it longer or shorter. Let's give it a next query. Can you make it longer? And voila, it gave us a long version of that same content. Now, let's try to convert it into email newsletters. We, digital marketers, often send emails to promote our products and services. So, let's give it a query as, can you convert it to email newsletters?
as you can see it has generated an email with a subject line and body that is enticing and engaging to read. We can also utilize chat GPT to correct grammar or change the tone of the content. For example, let's enter a new query. What is Facebook? It has given us a general overview of Facebook. Now, let's ask it to rephrase it more engagingly and in a digital marketing context. We can give queries like, can you make it more engaging and relatable with digital marketing? As you can see, it has completely rephrased it and it is more interesting to read it as well. ChatGPT can also help with keyword research. So let's try it. We will give a query as suggest more search keywords for a digital marketing core site. And voila, it has completed a work we used to spend 10 to 15 minutes in a few seconds. You can request to write blogs as well. Let's give it a query to search for some keywords for the blog. Suggest keywords to write a blog on digital marketing. It gave us some keywords. You can ask it to reduce these topics based on search volume to get maximum results. Let's ask it to narrow it down to 5 topics based on keywords volume. Here we have some suggestions. Let's pick a topic, content writing and ask it to write an article on content writing. Here we have our article for the blog. Let's use ChatGPT to SEO optimize it. Let's first request it to give us meta title and meta description. Here we have meta title and meta description for this article. We can even request it to give us an SEO optimized URL link. We can also request it to write the SEO optimized version of this article. Just give it a command as also can you SEO optimize this article to improve Google search results. Here we have fully SEO optimized article with meta title and meta description with a SEO optimized URL. ChatGPT can also be used to train your customer service chatbots, but we can discuss the process in some other video. ChatGPT is well versed with its content writing capabilities. It can even help you write product marketing campaigns. Let's try it with this query. The query is write a product marketing campaign for simply learn digital marketing courses. Well, ChatGPT has done it again. This campaign looks interesting and it will be able to generate more leads for Simply Learn's courses. ChatGPT can also be used to write scripts for YouTube videos. Let's give it a query as yes. write a script for 5 minute YouTube video promoting Simply Learn and its digital marketing courses.
As you can see, it gave us full script along with few suggestions for video editor on where to put logos and clips to make the video more engaging. If you are a content creator and you don't know how to approach other content creators for a collaborative video, then ChatGPT can help you with that. It can help you writing collaboration emails as well. My next query will be to write a collaborative email for a YouTube video on digital marketing. Since my last query was related to SimpliLearn, ChatGPT assured that I work for SimpliLearn and I wrote a customer collaboration email that looks professional plus easy to read and understand. Let me tell you what ChatGPT is. ChatGPT is a machine model that generates human-like text responses. It's been generated on a massive data set of text and can generate highly accurate responses to a wide range of queries. But how can ChatGPT be used for web development? There are a number of ways. For example, ChatGPT can generate website content, improving SEO and boosting engagement. ChatGPT can also be used to create chatbots that can interact with customers in a natural and engaging way. Now, let's look at some of the real life examples of how ChatGPT has been used for web development. So, for example, if I ask ChatGPT to create an e-commerce website for me, it will easily create it. So let's see it. Please create a website for me in HTML and CSS. So there is one point that I wanted to tell you guys. If you want to ask ChatGPT for anything, just give good description about it so it can give you a good response if i tell you uh, tell it more about my uh, requirements it will generate good uh, quality of product okay so let me tell it please create a website for me in css and html that should some colors like orange and blue right and where I'm selling okay now lay wait for the response of chat GPT it will create us the things the code okay and now it's writing the HTML code right so I'll tell you more about it. Like for example, uh, e-commerce sites use ChatGPT to generate product descriptions, improving their SEO and uh, driving sales. Customer service team use ChatGPT to create automated chatbots that can help customers with common queries. And there are so many other things also like uh, content creators also use ChatGPT to generate engaging content for their website, right? So. Let's wait a couple of minutes more until it gets completed, right? So as you can see, it's giving us a proper response of everything as it created this file for us and we can just easily copy it from here and I have logged into my online editor. You can open any editor if you want. So this is the online editor that I'm working on right now. I'll clean this. So as you can see e-commerce website is ready right so this is a very basic website but chat gpt has created this for us it's a very easy website like very basic but as the instructions that i gave it it applied all the things that it's using yellow color but i asked for orange but it's fine i asked for blue color so this is also fine but before asking chat gpt you should know a little bit about coding right so in h1 tag here you have to write the heading it's the header tag inside that it's the h1 the heading one okay so here i'll write my website name i'll write website and then you can see it's showing website right so how can you use ChatGPT for your own web development projects? 
First, you have to familiar yourself with the programming languages and tools that are compatible with ChatGPT. And it will only knows the data until 2021. So once you are done that, you can experience with ChatGPT to see how it can benefit your project. Right? If I ask him to create, wait, I'll show you guys some of the things that ChatGPT can do. Create a header. So I've told ChatGPT to create a header and make it functional and also add page, product page and contact us page. Make it a little more, I have written, make it attractive, right? So let's see. It will write us a code for that. So until then, let me tell you the use cases. So as I already mentioned, Chat GPT has already proven its values in various web development scenarios. For example, e-commerce platform use Chat GPT to generate product descriptions, boosting their search engine optimization and driving more sales. Customer service team employ Chat GPT to build interactive chatbots that provides instant and accurate responses to customer queries, enhancing the overall user experience. So, optimize the generated content from SEO ensures that the text generated by Chat GPT aligns with relevant keywords and follow SEO best practices. Right? So, with the help of Chat GPT SEO things, this can help improve your website visibility in search engine results and it can create natural and authentic chatbot experience. So, when using ChatGPT to develop chatbots, focus on creating conversation that feels like human. Use context and personalization to ensure user engagement and build trust. Leverage ChatGPT for customer engagement beyond generating content, right? Uh, ChatGPT can help engage user on your website also. For instance, you can use it to develop uh, interactivity and so many other things. Okay. So now let's see what ChatGPT has created for us. Right. Let's copy this and paste it on the online editor that I have showed you. I don't recommend using uh, online editor. You can have a Visual Studio code. It's very good. So it doesn't have any CSS, I guess. Yeah. Add your customer uh, custom styles for product pages here. Yeah. So as I know, we have to write the CSS here, but it's fine. I have to show you something different. So as I told it to create the e-commerce website, so it give uh, given its name as welcome to. Uh, e-commerce website but we can change it from here the title of the website we can change it right and i have told it to create home product and contact page right as i have showed you so it has created the same thing that i have told charge video to create for me as in the products page there's no things added right now but we can add it add your products and their details here as it's written in the code also i guess yeah in the section part, we can add our product and the things that we want, right? Now, let's ask ChatGPT to create circle, create five circle different radius for 20 pixels to 100 pixel right and different files and plus blue and orange now let's see whether it can create five circles of different radius for us or not right and now it's writing the HTML file for us. Let's wait a couple of seconds to see whether it can create. So it given us the things we want, but I don't think so. It has different uh, radius. Okay, as you can see in the CSS part, 
it is given everything a different height and width let's copy the CSS first or HTML anything you want and we'll paste it on the online editor let's go again and copy the HTML part also and paste it here now we will down and as you can see the first circle is small and then the last one is the largest one right so as you have given it the chat GPT the instructions that I want this thing or that thing it has created the same thing that I told him to do right so it's all about instructions but as I know that this is width and height this is very simple thing but when you will uh, code on Python or JavaScript or Java it will be a very complex things so I recommend first learn the language and then use ChatGPT to improve it right so many developers and uh, programmers use ChatGPT to enhance their productivity not to learn it so it's very good for learning purpose also if I tell it I want to learn Java as I say Java from where should start learning it give me some princess and some good sides from where I can start with the links of them right so I asked ChatGPT to tell me from where should I start learning the HT, uh, Java so it's now telling that's great Java is a popular programming language as there are many resources available to help you learn it here are some of the website and resources where you can start learning Java right so it's giving me oracle java tutorials it's very good to learn java from uh, java programming on coursera it's giving some of the renowned java certification courses but i recommend you to take our java certification full stack java certification the link will be in the description box for that it's a very good certification for um, newly uh, starting a developer or programmer or uh, experienced one also so from there you will start learning java from scratch so that is also very good you can also check it out right so as i told it to give me the instructions from how to uh, learn java so it just gave me everything with the links right so now let's get to give me any projects ideas for react yes right so now it's uh, telling me uh, you can create a project on react for from starting from to do list which is a very basic app when you start learning any language you started by from to do list only or to do app whatever you say next one is weather app movie library which is also a very good practice for library uh, for uh, react developers to start learning react from and the e-commerce store except founder chat application and these are the 10 projects that they uh, the chat GPT told us to learn right so it's very good you can ask it anything if you don't know anything like uh, I'll tell you react JS right I don't know thing about react JS Please free about it. So I told it I don't know anything about React.js. I know about React.js, but it's like I want to see what it's saying. You can also check out the projects that I have created on React on this Simply Learns YouTube channel. So as uh, it's saying everything, certainly React.js is a popular JavaScript library for building user interfaces. It was developed by Facebook and it is widely used for building single page application. It's a dynamic uh, application 
So some of the key points of React, component-based architecture, virtual DOM, and declarative syntax, unidirectional data flow, React hooks, and so many other things. So as you don't know in, uh, anything about React, it will tell you to get started with React, you can begin by learning fundamentals of JavaScript and familiarize uh, yourself with HTML and CSS. Once you have a good understanding of these technologies, you can explore React.js by following tutorials, reading documentation. I recommend documentation because it's very good. You will get a deep understanding of that. Then move to tutorials and all and build small projects. It is also a very good thing. Start from uh, learning from the projects. You will learn more. React official document is here. So excellent resource to learn React.js from scratch. Additionally, there are various online courses, tutorials, and YouTube channels dedicated to teaching learning uh, React.js such as React course on these platforms. And you can also learn React from our YouTube channel. Remember to, to, to practice regularly, build projects to refine uh, your learning and leverage the React.js community for support and guidance. As technology advances in all aspects of our lives, programming has become increasingly important. It is used in many fields and industries, including software development, gaming and entertainment, education, scientific research, web development, and many more. So, needless to say, the demand for programming and coding in the IT industry will probably keep increasing for the foreseeable future. But where does ChatGPT OpenAI's popular language model fall in this chain? That's exactly what we are focusing on in this today's video. As I said earlier, programming is utilized in many domains like web development, robotics, mobile development, machine learning, and so on. So how can a program achieve maximum code efficiency? Nowadays, we have AI-based tools like ChatGPT to make our programming experience more efficient. Although there are several coding resources platforms such as Stack Overflow and GitHub, where programmers can find solutions to their technical programming questions, ChatGPT stands out from the competition because of its quick response time, usability, and support for numerous languages, among many other benefits. Now, let's first discuss how ChatGPT works. ChatGPT generates responses to the text input using a method called transformer architecture. A large volume of text is fed into the ChatGPT from various sources, including books, websites, and other social media platforms. The model then uses this information to forecast the following word in a phrase based on the words that came before it. The ChatGPT system allows users to enter text or queries, and then the system uses its training data and algorithms to produce the right answer. The answer is created after the input text has been examined, and the pattern most likely to match the input have been identified using the training data. In short, ChatGPT is designed to respond to queries logically and command more quickly and accurately. But why do programmers use ChatGPT on a regular basis? ChatGPT assists programmers by offering programming-related answers and solutions and helping them improve their skills. Besides that, ChatGPT is utilized for code generation, code completion, code review, and a natural language interface. Let us understand each in detail. ChatGPT is trained to generate the code or even the entire program described in the natural language specified by what they want a program to do. And then ChatGPT could generate the relevant code. Look at the example of how ChatGPT generates the code. So now open the ChatGPT and you can type any program that you want ChatGPT to generate. So I will give write a palindrome program in Java. So here you can type write a palindrome program in Java. So using Java programming language, it should generate the whole program. So as you can see, it has generated the program. So it has used a class name called palindrome checker and it has used each palindrome as a method name. And also it will give the explanation on the program. So you can see here why it is explaining why each palindrome is used as a method and uh, it also explains uh, the for loop if a condition and so on. Next we have code completion. ChatGPT is trained to generate snippets of code or even fully fledged programs. It can generate a list of possible code completion depending on the context of the user's incomplete piece of code. By automatically producing the entire code, it can help the developers save time and minimize errors. Next. Let's see the example of code completion using ChatGPT. So even if the program is explained in natural language, ChatGPT will generate the proper code and give the complete code. So let's type here, 
using a function write a program to convert the string in uppercase so using which language let's keep using c programming and enter it once again so as you can see we have just said that using a function write a program to convert the string in uppercase so using c programming language and using c programming language it has used function and you know this is the function convert to uppercase and has com given the complete code for string or uh, to convert a string in uppercase and also it gave the explanation here the convert to uppercase function takes a pointer to a string as its argument and then iterates over each character in the string using a for loop so it explained why for loop is used why to upper is used and why the method convert to uppercase is used everything so let's say uh, we'll give one piece of code like void to upper char str So as you can see, we just gave the method to upper and it's generating the complete code. So this is how ChatGPT works for code completion. Next, code review. ChatGPT can analyze code, identify the bugs or errors in the program and further help resolve them. It allows developers to fix errors more quickly. So now let's have a look at the example of code review. So in this example, ChatGPT will review the code. So even if the code has some mistake, it will give the proper output. Let's say we have given the example here. So we gave the function or a method called upper. And here we are giving the keyword called upper. So it should check whether this piece of code is proper or is there any mistake in this. So as I said, uh, it's saying that the given code appears to have logical error as the function upper is being called recursively on itself inside the loop. So instead of giving to upper, we just gave upper here, right? So using the keyword to upper, only then the string can be converted to uppercase. So here we gave just upper. So it says that it is having this piece of code is having a logical error and it gives the proper code for us. So I hope it's clear. And then we have natural language interface. With the use of ChatGPT, a software application can be given a natural language user interface that enables users to communicate with it through natural language instructions rather than through conventional user interfaces. Next, let's see how ChatGPT helps the programmers for natural language interface. So let's say we'll give here create a software application where the user asked to enter credential for the to-do app. Give enter. So as you can see, the ChatGPT will give the steps. So it can provide you with an outlet for creating a software applications that requires the user to enter credential for a to-do app. So here it is few steps that we need to follow to do a to-do app. So it's giving the explanation step by step. So it says that determine the programming language and framework, then set up the database to store the user information and then create the registration page and then finally create the login page as well. And once the user is successfully logged in, um, you know, it will have the options like add, edit and delete task as well. And then finally implement the security measures to, you know, protect your passwords and then Test the application to ensure that it works as intended and the user data is being stored and retrieved correctly. 
so it gives the steps of how it has to be developed i'm sure you all are aware of chatgpt at this point the revolutionary new ai based chatbot developed by open ai has taken the world by storm thanks to its near life like responses and a very intricate pattern of answers we have never seen this level of expertise from a chatbot before which really made us think to what extent can we push it there are many questions on lead code that even the most experienced programmers have difficulty answering so we wanted to see how far chat gpt can take us have we finally reached the stage where ai is going to replace us let's find out so basically here we will be listing 10 really difficult questions that we found on lead code popularly asked while hiring and other superior examinations and see if chat gpt can actually answer or solve those difficult questions or not but before you like to watch more such interesting videos then do subscribe to our youtube channel and hit the bell icon to never miss an update from simply learn so let's get started so here is the lead code let's see uh, in our list which is the first question that we are going to implement in our chat gpt and see if it's able to solve it or not mainly we'll focus on hard category questions only so according to my research there's a question of median of two sorted arrays so as you can see the success rate is 35.7% so let's see if the chat gpt is able to do this question So first let us go through the question. Okay. Press enter let's see what it first returns. uh on a one approach to solving this problem is to use a modified binary search algorithm to find the median of the two sorted arrays so right now it's particularly giving the logic which we can actually imply to solve this question and uh, this is a good thing about the chat gpt is that before uh, giving the code it's actually explaining how they are putting the logic in together in the code so probably you can use this logic to create your own program But let's see how sensible this code is. Quite a lengthy program. This program is in Python, so if uh, you are looking for your solutions on ChatGPT, you can always opt out or you know mention the specific program you want the code in. So okay, it's it's also gives that okay that the time complexity will be o log min m or n. So let's see if it. the case or not so we have copied it and we we'll quickly paste it over here as you can see uh as we know that python is uh, very sensitive towards its uh syntax and you can see the indentation over here is perfect but here it's not So I feel that something like this is something with lead code. So let me just quickly rectify this. You can see I have cleared out the indentation issue, and let's just quickly run this program so that we can get an idea if this is the correct program. Uh, now you can see here we have an error. Let's see. copy this and see what chat gpt has to say for this So if you remember when we actually saw this question there were three arguments passed through this function which was self nums 
one and nums two. Ask GPT if uh, it can write the code with self argument and see if it's correct. Wait that if it can pass a self argument through that function and see if it can generate a new code. Okay, now it has cleared that yes, it takes three arguments. Let's copy this code. It over here again. I think we will have to go through the indentation process. Oh no, this time it's fine. Okay, so now quickly run this program. Let's see if this time it passes all the test cases or not. Okay. I think it doesn't need because the class is already mentioned over here. Uh, yeah. Okay, the runtime is 35 ms and as we can see case 1 and case 2 is definitely passed. So let us see if this code can pass all the test cases internally mentioned in this question. Now you can see the first three cases are actually accepted but the other three are not. There is a runtime error. So, as the first question in our list, chat GPT was unable to solve. So let's move on to our next question. That is zigzag conversion. Now let me quickly search for it. This is a question here also you can see the success rate is definitely below 50 and uh, the difficulty level is medium. So the hard one charge GPT was not able to solve. Let's see if this can be done. So it will give a string that will be written in a zigzag pattern on a given number of rows. And uh, then you have to read the line in a certain, as you can see over here. So we have to write the code that will take a string and make this conversion given in a number of rows. This also means a certain amount of certific, uh, repeat. It has also given a certain specifications that we exactly want. So this time we'll make sure that we are mentioning everything. So let's quickly copy this. Okay. Okay. Now that we have mentioned all the specifications. Uh, let me quickly feed feed and paste it. Now let's see what code it has to generate. It's implementing the code in C++. So meanwhile, it's generating the code. Let's quickly select the code. Oh, it's already C++, OK. OK, it's also suggesting that we can definitely use Python and Java. And it's generating an alternative code as well for us. 
that's sharp. Just quickly copy this code. The one I think it's a uh, okay, so it's generating in uh, Java. It's generating, we'll definitely have a look at its alternative codes as well. Let's quickly have a look at what it has to C one. The first code generated by it uh, is correct or not? Okay, so I've copied the code. Pasted over here. Violation error. Okay, okay. Twenty-eight. Okay. So let's this error. The one thing definitely this time we have mentioned all the constraints, criteria, specifications that we wanted in our code. But again, charging questions we have implemented till now. Let's see if it has any success rate in further. Okay, it seems okay. Okay, now it is okay. So it uh, this time it is uh, generating the solution uh, considering the error in Java. Let's uh, see what it has to say in Java, and we'll make it specific that the error was in C plus plus program. So it generates the correct code. Plus plus program. What it has to say. Oh, thanks. So uh, this error is something related to the compiler and now it is giving the updated code in C++. Is the correct one or not? Should apologizing for making errors in their solutions. Quite fascinating. Uh, yeah. Paste the code over here. I don't see there's a lot of difference or changes over here. Let's see if it runs or not. Okay, let me see if the, all the braces are covered over here or not. I think it's missing a brace.
Okay, so there was a syntax error. One brace was missing. Uh, I don't know what that. Definitely something with the code, but okay, we can give that to Chat GPT. It was partially lead codes issue because we were copying code. Still, it was not giving the error that there is a brace missing. Has passed the first three cases mentioned over here, and the runtime is 3ms. Now, just let us submit this code and see if it passes all the rest of the cases or not. Mind it, this time we have actually mentioned all the constraints. So, let's see if this has to into. Okay, so this time it has passed all the test cases, but still, my conclusion with this question is. Uh, it was still not able to generate the solution in one go. Uh, but still I can give that to chat GPT because the first error that we faced was more of a lead codes issue because it was something with compile and uh, chat GPT was able to give a proper uh, now let's go back to our problems list. So Right now, the score is one and one. It was unable to solve one question and one not. So let's have a look at the third question and see if that brings any difference to the chat GPT's scoreboard right now or not. Third question that we are going to deal with is substring with concatenation of all words this is in the category again and the success rate is 31.1 percent which is even lesser than the first question that we faced which was median of the two sorted arrays we are trying here we are actually trying to cover all the spectra the huge spectra of different types of uh, questions and you know categories available in coding and uh, to give you an idea of uh, how beneficial chat GPT can be for you to solve difficult questions, which can be helpful for your interview base in companies or you, you can say well-established companies or mom companies. So here this video is specifically for you to give an idea that whether you can use it for your benefit and you know to get an idea or you can actually uh, compare it with your projects uh, and you can get a you know wider range of different types of approaches to a certain question so let's start with the third question Is that you're given a string and an array of strings, probably words, and all the strings or words are of the same length. Now, a concatenated substring in S is a substring that contains all the strings of any permutation of words concatenated. Here you can see it's given an example that if words has A, B, C, D, E, F, then A, B, C, D, E, F, basically it uh, has done all the permutation and combinations that can be done using that specific array. Uh, and the condition that A, C, D, B, E, F is not a concatenated substring because it is not the concatenation of any permutation of words. So we have to basically return the starting indices of all the concatenated substring in the A string. Also, you can choose any order for it. Here it has also given uh, two examples for you to understand the question in a better perspective. Now, really, uh, copy this question and see if uh, what programming language ChatGPT chooses to answer this time. with new chat again copy these constraints oh. 
Okay, it's just a question. Okay, this is the solution that we're getting right now. You requested a model that is not compatible with this engine. Please contact us through our help center at help dot open AI dot com for further questions. Let me just quickly refresh it if it has a, something to do with the you know demand. Also, sometimes it happens that the console is very busy and you're unable to implement uh, your task in it. So again, let's quickly paste it over here. We want a code. Write a code. Return now. Let's enter. So I'm definitely it's not giving the same error. Let's see it this time. It ChatGPT has anything to give as a solution. Okay, so it's generating the code in Python. One more thing, every time ChatGPT doesn't follow a similar pattern, as you can see in the first question, it explained the logic first and uh, then implemented the code. Second time, it just gave you the approach, not the logic and then implemented the code in multiple languages, uh, first choosing for C++. And this time, it straight away went for the code. So definitely, we can say that it has some different styles of generating their code and explaining the code. I think it depends on the understanding how they want the code to be presented in front of the user and uh, to give the perspective that if the code is understandable or not. And if the code has multiple approaches, I think ChatGPT is capable to capable enough to give that. So that the code is generated. Let's quickly copy it and paste it over here. I feel the indentation issue is going to be there. It was not there. Mm, okay. F probably, but I think it will backspace. Sure. Let me quickly rectify this and I'll do you once the indentations are.
see the indentation is uh, corrected. Now uh, let's have a look at the code if it's correct or not. Let's quickly run it. Definitely it has given our first syntax error again. I can see that even specific video question, it definitely goes to at least one error, which is mainly the syntax one. Sure if that is something with the lead code or you know with the chat GPT code generation. It, okay, now that we have given the error, okay, it seems that the error is caused by the use of type hints. The punch in type hints were introduced, and the version we are using is lower than that. Okay, so basically, it's generating now in the Python version. Uh, probably this code is well suited for different version of Python. Let's change it then and see if that helps. it it is actually generating the code okay again given the error i think it's again something with the self uh, python one the new code generated is here we'll definitely come back to that error and have a look at the python 3 code also uh first let's copy this code and In giving the same error. Let's see what it has to say. Uh, you know, every time the chat GPT generates the Python code, we cannot ever take self as an argument but the lead does. as you can see when we start the code it's already mentioned what arguments we need to pass from a particular function so i think that is something with the lead code so that what all arguments it's passing even though we have mentioned everything this time we have mentioned all the constraints we have mentioned all the uh, necessary specifications that we want in the code even then the code is not correct in the one go so probably i'll give this point to gpt it's something with the lead code because it's passing that parameter and uh, every time we have to mention that parameter pretty much when we do the chat gpt is able to solve the question so let's see well, let me uh, actually mention that Pass uh, self parameter, self argument from that parameters. You know, make it a one of the parameters. Processing that okay. 
yes self can be passed as the first argument to the given function now let's see if that it's able to give the correct solution or not again we can see it's uh, generating the code and uh, you know python 3 but we can give that to chat gpt that it, either it uses python or python 3 the error is with the self argument so once we mention that error and when we mention that specification that if chat gpt can pass self argument through that particular function in that code the solution is pretty much right so here it's also implementing and giving the answer Okay, it also has mentioned that uh, it's important to mention import, imported list and counter. So, okay. Let's copy this because again, there will be a lot of uh, integration issues. Okay, now that we have it, let's copy the code was already mentioned so yeah we'll just copy it from the function paste it run this code and see if it has the solution in it or not yeah there is an indentation issue let me Again, as you can see, it is able to pass all the test cases here and the runtime is 28 ms. Now, let us submit this question and see if it is able to pass other test cases or not. So, it is able to pass all the test cases and uh, I think this is something with lead code again uh, whenever we are generating the python code we are actually passing self argument uh, in lead code but chat gpt is not assuming it so this solution is definitely correct uh, even though we are specifying everything we will have to be more specific that we have to run one more argument uh, from the function so that it you know generates the solution in one go so let us uh, try that in our next question but we can definitely see chat gpt was able to solve this so now the scoreboard is 2 and 1 uh, among the three questions it is definitely able to solve two questions even the first question it was able to generate a correct solution but it was not that accurate to pass all the test cases to our question list the next question that we are going to cover is n queens category but still the success rate is 63 percent over here again a new genre or question we are covering over here let us see if solve it or not definitely the success rate shows that many people were able to do it definitely more than half of people who have attempted it so let's see if the question can if this ai can beat that or not so uh, i have co copied this question this question mentions that the end queens 
puzzle is the problem of placing n queens on an n into n chessboard such that no two queens attack each other. Given an integer n, return all distinct solutions to the n queen puzzle. So basically, n is any given number and you have to create a puzzle of n into n and you have to arrange all the queens in such a uh, you know, way also the number of queens in the board will be equal to the number in and in such a way that it is not able to attack each other in any case. Pop it this part of the question and the constraint is just one. Let me that it would be easier to keep a track of uh, what all questions ChatGPT is able to solve. So these questions are very popular uh, in interviews. Uh, whenever you actually go to technical rounds and uh, or prestigious companies these questions are very popular uh, they are considered as very uh, suitable questions to check uh, to check your you know iq and to check your potential that how well aware you are towards your coding potential now that we have pressed enter it is giving the logic it is going to implement in its code one approach to solve the n queen's puzzle is to use backtracking. Idea is to start by placing a queen in the first column of the first row. So let's see if the code is again capable to you know solve it or not. Again, it's giving the Python code. Generating the code, let us quickly see whether it's Python or Python 3. Python 3. Okay. Once the code is generated, I'll also write that you need to pass one more argument from the main function uh, that is self and uh, let, let it generate uh, the code again and see that code can run in one go or not. what I want and let us see sure here's an example of how you can pass an additional parameter self let's see if it suits the code or not n queen function is a method of the n queens class and it takes self as its first parameter followed by the integer n so yes this solution does take self as a parameter so let's see if this can run in one go or not because this time we have already covered the most uh, frequently generated error which is syntax error of not mentioning parameter self so, let me see the indentation if it's correct or not. Okay. 
this time. Uh, let us quickly run this. Class. Okay, there you go. Now you can see that it has actually run the code in one go and all the test cases are passed in one go. Even the runtime is 39 ms. So definitely ChatGPT is able to provide the solutions, the logics in a proper manner. It's just that we have to be more specific with what we want exactly uh, from ChatGPT. Right now we can see that it has been able to successfully generate out of five uh, questions that we have actually implemented till now, uh, out of which four are from hard category. Let us submit this code and see if it also covers all the test cases inter internally fed in for this question. Just a second, I think I will have to uh, submit it again. There you go. It has accepted all the test cases and this question is done by chat gpt it has actually implemented this question that we are going to cover till now i can say chat gpt has taken the lead it is pretty much able to implement all the questions uh, i think there are still some range of questions that it is not able to implement as we saw the first one was not a huge success but uh I can still give that to ChatGPT as it is in AI and still in a, you know, developing mode. But still, if it can give you 90% of the output correct, it is a pretty decent and, you know, amazing thing to do. Question is shortest sub array with some at least k now let me search for it again this question is from hard category and its success rate is even low which is 26.1 let's see if this question can be solved by chat gpt let us have a look at the question given an integer array nums and an integer k return the length of the shortest non-empty sub array of nums with a sum of at least k so if there is no such sub array return minus one so sub array is a contiguous part of an array it has also given a description of what an array is or what array sub array is so now that we have in a new chat and let me change So here is one way to solve the problem. Initialize two pointers, uh, left and right, both pointing to the first element of the array. Initialize a variable. So now this time this it is giving pointers to solve this question. Uh, you know, a perfect approach in a sequential manner so that you can also use these pointers and the logics it's giving to actually implement your own code apart from, you know, asking it to generate a code. So I can see that it has given the pointers, but not the code specific. So yes, uh, it's giving an implementation of the algorithm in Python. Uh, again, we can see it's not the Python 3, it's Python, a uh, little lower version of Python. Uh, Switch to Python. 
then we have to pass self So it has generated the code and explained what all variables and what all statements have the individual fun functionality as. So we have also asked it to pass self parameter through its function and then write the code. So let's see if it adheres to it and generates new code with self parameter. Okay, so here is the new code with self parameter passed to the main function. Now I do have confidence on chat GPT till now that it was able to generate logical and you know pretty much decent solutions for every question. This is passed to the class as an argument when an object is created and is stored as an instance variable. Shortest sub array takes k as an argument, which is the target sum. So basically, it's trying to explain the code that what exactly it's doing and what individual statements have as an influence on the code. And whatever parameters they are passing, what influence or what position they hold in the code. Uh, definitely, ChatGPT is not just generating the code, uh, you know, it's also explaining the logic and approaches towards it. And when it's generating the code, as you can see here, they have legit explained the whole code, how it's actually functioning. That's a good way to, you know, put emphasis on, you know, put a confidence on the solution. Remove this. Yeah. Type error. Okay. Let me. Okay, so it's apologizing it made a mistake in its previous response. The init method should take two arguments, one for the nums array and one for k. So now it's again generating a new code or adhering to the syntax error or type error generated. So let's right or not. mentioned that here the init method takes two arguments one for the nums array and one for the k which was the error exactly and it's again explaining the whole code so that one person who watches code or you know the logic could understand the functionality of it let's see if this code can run Code, checking for indentation, removing class, and run. There's one more type error. Let's copy it and And we mentioned that we want self argument to be passed. It is still not able to generate, you know, the correct solution twice. So let's see if this time it can work out. Okay. 
хочу до видекора. Вона часто вита конфюжен, сімс, та ремес індустрі. That you are trying to call the function directly without creating an instance of the class. In that case, function outside of the class and simply call it by passing the parameters like this. Okay, the code is definitely generated by itself. So definitely I am not calling any function. Uh, the code I copied was actually generated by chat GPT itself. So it's it contradicting its own pointers, maybe. Right, we have copied the question, uh, sorry, the code. Let's paste it. Again, look for indentation. And run this code. Okay, once again, it is not able to, you know, pass. I am error is there. Now, again, we have to copy this error and paste it. Again, according to chat GPT, it was confused with the context of the question. Uh, like I said, the code was anyway generated by chat GPT. So yeah, this time I think chat GPT is trying to contradict its own logics. Let's see if the current code can do the miracle of solving this question. Last and run. Okay, so after four attempts of running the codes generated by chat GPT on lead code, but this particular question, finally, now it's able to pass all the test cases. So I can, I have a very contradicting point right now. Uh, not exactly contradicting, more of a skepticism that, okay, chat GPT does generate uh, proper code or logic, but it doesn't consider all the, the criteria or it also has a tendency of taking the question in a wrong context. So I feel that when we as a human try to solve these questions, we definitely try to implement the, all the logics. And uh, if we get it, we can actually get the code in one go. Jake or, you know, demand of the question. And be AI being the superior version or, you know, trying to be the superior version of human brain and going to the extents of a human brain still faces those issues can be a, you know, drawback for chat GPT. Because you can see for this specific question, we have faced multiple types of error and we have seen chat GPT contradicting its own prior code. So definitely this is something to consider or, you know, something to think about. Submit this code. After, like I said, after giving four attempts, it is still not able to pass all the test cases. It is only able to six, pass 61 out of 97 test cases. 
which is almost 70% of the test cases, 30% of the test cases are still not passed. Even though we mentioned all the constraints, we have mentioned the comments, we have mentioned all the errors that but this particular code can go through. Still, it was not able to generate the proper code that could go through all the test cases. So, this was a fail for ChatGPT. Uh, at least till now, we have made out this point that ChatGPT is definitely not able to solve every question. Question. Split array with same average. All right. Split array with This is from the category of hard questions and the success rate is only 25%. Uh, let me refresh it and remove this code. Now let's have a look at the code, what it demands. So you are given an integer array nums. Now you should move each element of nums into one of the two arrays, A and B, such that A and B are non-empty. And the average of array A is equal to average of array B. Now return true if it is possible to achieve that. Condition is not justified. So given a note that for an array, uh, average array is the sum of all the elements of array over the length of array. Okay, so it is, it is giving you the logic of how to actually, you know, find out the average of what average is exactly. And also it has given a few examples to give you the code needs to be projected or implemented. Paste, copy the code and paste it. Okay, it is possible to achieve this by checking all the possible subsets of the nums array and comparing the averages of the subsets. So definitely it has given you the approach, uh, the way you can actually think of solving this question. Uh, however, this approach would have a time complexity. So it's also giving that this approach can have a time complexity of O to the power uh, N. So again, it's suggesting a different approach, a more efficient approach that will be using dynamic programming. Now that can be used to find the subsets with a specific average and create a 2D array with the length of i and j that will be the length of the two we have actually given as input and represents whether or not it is possible to get a sum of j using the first elements of the nums array. So, So the time complexity of this approach would be O and S. So definitely it is not given a code. Uh, let me ask for it. But, uh, not for every question chat GPT is generating a code. It is also mentioning just and the approaches that we can actually use. Uh, definitely, again, we will have to mention that what we want from them. As you can see, I've mentioned this time to write a code for it and now it's generating a new code for it. It's also mentioning comments that what every snippet of the code is actually for and what it will do. Like here you can see it will fill the 2D array DP. Uh, DP stands for dynamic programming. This here it has mentioned initialize the first column as true. So it is also mentioning the comments for better idea of, you know, understanding the code in a better way. 
It's also giving the note that this implementation assumes that the nums array is non-empty and that the elements of the nums array are non-negative integers. Okay, also the above implementation will return the possible subset that can be formed by the array to fulfill the given condition and not boolean true and false. But that's what we want exactly, right? Uh, still, okay, let us, this approach is in Python. So let's copy this and see if this code can run or not. I can clearly see that again it needs to pass self uh, parameter or indentation Give it a heads up. Or I have mentioned what I want specifically. Uh, sure, here is an example of how you can pass the self parameter. So now the current solution will pass self. Okay. Great, there was an error. Okay. and it has generated a new code uh, considering the criteria I just mentioned that I need self parameter to be passed to the function can partition. So I have copied it and uh, let's quickly paste it over here. Uh, you know pass all the cases and not wait uh, we need to remove this. Okay, it's done. Now quickly just run this program. Okay, so here is a error, attribute error. Solution object has no attribute. Okay, so let me copy it and paste it over here and see what chat GPT has to say about this error. Okay, the error message solution object has no attribute. Uh, split array same average suggests that there is no method named with this in the solution class. So it is likely that the test case is trying to call this method, but it does not exist in your implementation. Anyway, that I have not mentioned this method. This was given by ChatGPT itself. So again, we can see the condition that it is contradicting its own so again, it has generated a new response and it says that it should resolve the issue and the test case should be able to call this particular method correctly. So that is something for us to decide. Now let us copy this code and see that now is it able to run or not and pass all these test cases or not. click on run okay. now the new generated response does works for this particular question and the runtime is 12 ms and it does passes the first two cases mentioned so let us quickly submit this code and see if the code is perfectly you know fine to deal with all the test cases actually fed by lead code
Okay, now again we can see one more situation that this code is not able to pass all the test cases even though we mentioned all the specifications, constraints and we were pretty precise about the questions and parameters that we want our code to be done in certain form but still it is just able to pass 68 test cases out of 111 which is almost 50 to 60 percent of uh, total amount of test cases. So let's move on to the next question. That is find substring with a given hash value. So let me quickly search for this question. Find substring with value again it's it's a question from hard category and the success rate is 22.2 percent so let's have a look at the question what it demands so here the hash of a zero indexed string of length k given in teachers p and m is computed using the following functions now hash with parameters spm uh, this is the logic given how we want our output to be demonstrated in certain value or how the hash can be generated the particular formula uh, how you can get the hash value of your you know uh, string so the question is you are given a string and then teachers uh, and you have to return the first substring of that string of length uh, given to you here it's k the test cases will be generated such that an answer always exists we are going to copy this course and mention all the specifications mentioned here in their chart gpt console so that it gets all the specifications copy the code and So I have copied the code and paste it over here. Now let's check for indentation. It's fine. Let's remove class my class and again it faces a type error. So let's move on to the next question. Again, we saw that ChatGPT was not able to solve this particular question. Coming back to our list, the next question in the list that we are going to cover is partition array into two arrays to minimize some difference. Let's quickly search for that question. Partition array. Two, two arrays. Again, this question is from hard category and the success rate is even more low. So let's have a look at the question first. It's partition array into two arrays to minimize some difference. That is generated as the output. Or we can see that there are three constraints. So now quickly we'll copy this question and see if it is able to solve this question or not first we have to create a new chat copy all the constraints Let's see what ChatGPT has to say for this particular question. Let's ask it to generate a code. This time it has only generated a logic, not exactly logic, the approach they, they are going to follow or anyone can follow to solve this question. 
me ask if it can generate a code. It's definitely taking longer time to generate this code. Okay, here is the code which is possible Python implementation and uh, okay, the code is generated and uh, it's mentioning that the code takes in an input an array of integer called nums. So basically, uh, it's explaining that what it actually it's doing, which is pretty much explained in the question itself that what exactly it needs to function like and what will be the variables and what will be the inputs and how it needs to be segregated to uh, obtain our optimum result. So let's copy this and paste it over here. Again, like I said, we can see that it's generating, you know, uh, again, we could see that self parameter okay in the attribute error let's quickly copy it paste it over here let's see what chat gpt has to say about it okay that you have seen that after placing the error it's giving that error message you're seeing suggests that there's a problem with the function name in your code so the error message is indicating that there is no function called minimum difference within the solution uh, also i have seen that uh, apart from the function name it doesn't have a self parameter so let me just write it down argument in apps wait let me copy it that will be better and write a new code with it let me see if it can generate a new code this time. So yeah, it has agreed. Sure, it, there is an example and oh, here's the code. So I have copied this and pasted over. any such huge difference in the syntax or the logic of the code but yeah we can definitely think of running now let's run this code we copy it and paste it over here again an error has prompted out i don't know how a valid code we'll get after projecting this error over here in chat gpt Oh yeah, definitely considering the error message you are seeing is indicated that the function is returning INF, which is not a valid value for the expected return type integer. So in the base case where i and j are both zero, the value of is set to float, which is positively infinity. However, the expected output is an integer. So this valid this value is not valid. So again, uh, considering this change, the uh, chat GPT is giving a new code. So let us see how valid this new code is. Okay, I can see that it has changed the logic over here. Instead of float INF, it has changed, it has uh, written a new syntax, a new logic over there. Now, and also chargeability guarantees that this may solve the issue of returning INF as the value. Let's see how accurate ChatGPT here is. Now, we have pasted the logic. Uh, yeah, as oh, yeah, sorry, I need to remove these two lines. 
Now let's quickly run this program. Okay, so now as you can see, it could only pass one test case, but not the first two. So there's no point of submitting this code as we can see that the logic for this code or this code as a whole is not. Well, moving on. Next in the list we have is longest common subpath. Now let's see longest common subpath. So this question also comes from category of hard questions and the success rate is 27%. Now let's see what this question demands actually. Now let's quickly copy this question with all the constraints and whatever apart from example is left on the screen we need to copy it as you can see over here you cannot just miss out on any specifications. Talking about the constraints, copy and paste. Now enter. It's giving the approach to solve this question, which is dynamic programming approach. Okay, we didn't got any code over here, so let's try that if we can present a code. I have asked to write a code for this and uh, yes, ChatGPT has definitely agreed to provide me a code for it. Uh, ChatGPT is done with its explanations. I'll uh, type it out and wait for the new code which will contain self as a parameter. That it's, this code is pretty similar to the previous one. It's just that it's using the self argument in the function as it was mentioned by me. So let's quickly copy this code. Paste it over here. Check for the indentation. We run this code. I don't think there should be any. Okay, I spoke too fast. Here we have another error. Let's see what ChatGPT has to say about this. The list index out of range error is likely occurring on line 10 because the indices i and j are being properly bounds checked before being used to access elements in the path and tpras. Okay, so we have found a new code. Let's quickly copy this code and see if this code is capable of, you know, eliminating the errors we probably found. copy and paste let me check for the station done and run then we got a error over here even though after providing so many specifications and criteria and errors and conditions yet chat GPT was not able to provide a perfect solution for the code uh, moving on to the last question of our list that is going to be uh, sum of total strength of wizards. Hopefully this question does some magic for chat GPT and prove itself lucky for chat GPT graph for this video because for now we can see it's a 50-50 scene. Uh, half of the question chat GPT was able to provide solutions with and half of the questions chat GPT couldn't actually figure out what uh, needs to be done even the logic and approach was correct still the implementation of the code was not correct so let me search for this question sum of total strength of wizards again a hard category question so let's have a look at the question first let's 
quickly copy this question, uh, create a new chat, paste it over here, and uh, look for constraints. Now that we have copied it, paste it, and enter. It's giving an approach how you can actually uh, think of a solution for this particular question. ChatGPT has not generated any code. Uh, let me ask for it. Okay. So here's an example. Again, they have implemented the code in Python. Now, it is also giving a note that the approach is valid only if we are allowed to modify the original array. And also, we are not working on down over here. function and then write this code. So let's see if we can do it with self argument. Okay, so yeah, there's an example, it's generating the code. Okay, so let's see what's the update with the code. Yeah. Yes. Desert R. Let's add solution. And run the code. So there's a runtime error. Let me see why. This error and paste it over here. See what ChatGPT have to say. The error message solution object has no attribute mod. Suggest that there is a class named solution and the code is trying to access an attribute named mod on an instance of that class, but the attribute doesn't exist. We probably uh, need to make more specifications and if it still doesn't work, then it clearly classifies that chat GPT doesn't take every point or a classification, uh, you know, in consideration, uh, which ultimately, uh, you know, reflects on the solution. The new code is here. Let me quickly paste it. Okay. Let's try running this code. Let's see if this works. Try running it again. Again, it has a runtime error. I was unable to solve one more question. Now that we have tried and tested a huge spectrum of questions from Deep Code on ChatGPT, we can conclude that though ChatGPT is an amazing tool with a bright future, it still has its own limitations. And maybe it is not ready to replace humans or compete with human brains. These questions were picked from a list of frequently asked questions for interviews and examinations. ChatGPT does have a potential to generate logics and approaches for the code in an effective manner, but still its ability to analyze the question is weak as compared to humans. As we know, these questions are there. The success rate does shows that a proper solution do exist for these questions. But still, even after multiple attempts, ChatGPT was not able to find the correct answer. But we can also give ChatGPT the benefit of doubt that it's still it's in, in its initial phase and still there are a lot of aspects that need to be worked on. So probably in future, ChatGPT can take an upper hand over this. But for now, ChatGPT needs to do a lot of work for these situations. On that note, we present you Postgraduate Program in AI and Machine Learning 
Elevate your professional journey by enrolling in this AI and ML course presented through a partnership between Purdue University and IBM. Hurry up and enroll now. Find the complete course details from the link mentioned in the description box below. We'll start with our project and for that first we'll create a folder in Python projects. and name it as telegram port using chat GPT. okay and inside this we'll open the command prompt and open our id that is i would be using the visual studio code and you can use any id that you have hands on and now we will go back to our chat gpt and we'll start here but before that uh, let's talk about telegram board so a telegram board is a program that interacts with users via the telegram messaging app uh, the prerequisite is you should have a telegram account and boards can be used for a wide range of purposes such as customer support news delivery and even games and chat gpt so ChatGPT is a large language model trained by OpenAI that is based on GPT 3.5 architecture and ChatGPT is capable of generating human-like response to text-based inputs making it a great tool for building chatbots. And now if we talk about prerequisites, you should have a Telegram account, Python installed on your system and we need a Python Telegram bot library that I will show you what to install and that chat gpt will tell us like what to install so we'll just ask chat gpt to create telegram bot using python okay so it says error we'll just refresh the page and ask again create telegram bot using python okay i will see what he states so create a telegram board you need a telegram or talking to the board father yeah we have to go to the board father i will show you guys how to do that <laughs> install the required libraries next you need to install okay and write this code Okay, so in this script, they have started with the start function. So it will just say as hello when it would be started. Okay, so we'll add some more functionalities and we will ask uh, where to find the your api token here so i know like we have to go to the board father but we will ask chat gpt also where can we find the your api token so it states that to get to telegram board api token you need to create a new board by talking to the board father on telegram open telegram and search for board father okay and send the board father message that is slash new board and the board father will ask you for the name of the board and it will ask you about the username and the fifth is the board father will then generate a token for your board this token is a string of characters that uniquely identifies your board on telegram so keep this token secure and i will also blur it so you guys won't be able to see it okay so moving to a telegram we'll just search board father here and you can see this is the board father and we'll just click on start and they asked the chat gpt asked us to write slash new board we'll just click on this and we'll get so we'll write a new board how are we going to call it please choose a name for the board so we'll write simply learn 
underscore new bot okay good let's choose a username so simply learn one one underscore port and it states that that your username should end in bot so we have ended with bot and you could see the token here and here you can just access your bot so we'll get back to our id and create a new file and i will name it as new.py only or you can name it as bot.py or anything you want we'll get back to our Uh, chat GPT, but before that first we need to install the library for that you can go to the command prompt or you could use the terminal of your id that is uh, in visual studio code you could you could use the terminal to install the libraries you could see that the requirement is already satisfied as this library is already installed on the system so moving back library is installed and now we'll copy this code and paste it here and we will just change the token we'll go back to board further we'll copy this token come back and paste it here okay now we will run this and see whether our bot is working or not so it has successfully executed we will get back to our bot father and just click on simply run one one bot so we we'll click on start and see it says hello i am your bot so it's working fine so if we write hello it won't respond as there are no functionalities so we will ask chat to add functionalities please add some more functionalities and response to the port let's see so sure here's an example of how you can add some more functionality so the used port data dispatcher okay define the help command handler okay so chat gpt has defined three functions that is echo and what does echo do it will just give you the same thing what you give to the board or what you write to the board caps that he has also declared a help function and in which you can see like what functionalities does the board have and the caps will do it will convert the message to all caps echo uh, echo the message back to you it will give you the same message slash start it will start the board and slash help to get help and now unknown uh, if there is something you ask out of these things it will just say sorry okay I will let you guys understand this code also but first we'll see whether it's working or not so for that we have pasted it here now we'll paste our api token again so 
so I pasted it here now uh, first we will close this terminal and get a new terminal and then run the program I will get back to the port father and this is our port so we'll just write slash start and it says hello I am your board now we'll say hi to the board so okay it's not responding okay we'll just close the terminal and we have pasted the keys also okay we'll run it again now we'll see whether it's working or not start hi so the code is not working and just see the code again okay uh here we don't have any response to i or hello so what we'll do we'll use the help and to call the help what we have slash help so these are the commands for what it will respond so we'll use slash help okay now you can see that slash start to start the board that we have done help and echo echo the message back to you so we'll write hi don't write back so we'll write slash echo hi then he has given us the output that is hi so we can write slash echo how are you so it has given you back and same we have slash caps so we'll write slash caps and we'll write something in small caps that would be greatly built okay now you can see it has returned in caps so you can add some more functionality to it and before that i will get you guys understood the code so now we'll see what does this code do so first we have imported the necessary modules that is the classes from the python telegram board library that will need to create our board <clears throat> so telegram contains the main board class while updater command handler message handler and filters are classes that we use to handle incoming updates and messages from telegram okay <clears throat> now these are like uh, we have created an instance of the board class that is using our telegram board api token as well as an updater instance that will continuously fetch new updates from telegram and pass them to the appropriate handlers and we have used context equal to true that tells the updater to use the new context based api introduced in version 12 of the python telegram board library and we also used a dispatcher object that will handle incoming updates after that we have created a start function and passed update and context so we have defined a function that will handle the start command and the update parameter contains information about the incoming update from telegram while the context parameter contains some useful methods and objects that we can use to interact with the telegram api in this case we have used uh, context dot port dot send dot uh, send underscore message to send a message to the chat with the id specified by update dot effective underscore chat dot id and after that we have created a help function so we use a multi-line string to define the help message which contains a list of available commands and then we have used the context dot port dot send underscore message to send the help message to the chat and after that we have the 
echo function so we use context dot arguments to get the message sent by the user after the slash echo command so to use this we have to use the slash echo and after that we have to write the message and then use join to join the message back together to a single string we then uh, we have used the context dot board dot send underscore message to send the message back to the chat then we have caps so this function defines that will handle the caps command and we have again used the context dot arguments to get the message sent by the user after the slash caps command and then the we have used the upper function to convert the message to all caps and then we have used the context dot board dot send underscore message to send the message back to the chat then we have unknown function that is th this function defines that will handle any command that the board doesn't recognize so we have used context dot board dot send so it will just say sorry okay so these are the start handler help handler echo handler and caps handler so these are the commands and we have the we have added the add handler and to start the board we have used update dot start underscore polling so this is how we have created the board with the help of python and chatgpt so we are done with the project you can add more functionalities also to the board you can just ask chatgpt to get more functionalities to play music in the telegram board or you could just ask him how to send messages to a particular user by the board only and you could also send media files ask the media files from the board and you can train a fully board by the help of chat gpt and this is called chat gpt scripting so with the help of chat gpt you can just ask him and he will guide you with all the code and processes you just have to like make them in a sequence and use them to full of your use so for that First, we will open the command prompt and run the file main. For that, we will write the command go run main.go. So, this is the file that is written in the Go language. And we are going to run with the command go run main.go. For that, you need to have Golang installed on your system. So, I will guide you with all the process, but currently, we are seeing the demo. So, here this command will generate a QR code that will scan with the device which we want to integrate the chat GPT on. So we'll wait for the file to get executed. And after this, we will execute the server.py file and that will open the chat GPT on the Firefox browser. You can also use other browsers that is Chromium and other if you want, but we'll use Firefox to skip the one step verification that chat gpt ask us whether if we are a bot or a human so we will run the file again as there was some error so this time yeah it ran perfectly now we will take the device and open whatsapp on it in which we want to integrate the chat gpt so i am using one device to just capture this qr code so this is the device and you can see that my device has captured this QR code and you can see here that WhatsApp me M E O W it has been activated. So now we'll run another file that is server.py file and that is the Python file. For that we'll open the command prompt again and that would be another command prompt and to run that file we'll write the command Python server.py and you can see in the firefox browser chat gpt has opened and i have logged in already so it didn't it didn't ask me to log in again now we'll take another device and we'll message on the mobile device which has been integrated with the chat gpt so from this device i will write hi and you can see on the screen that 
chat gpt replies hello how can i assist you today and the same you could see on the whatsapp chat so today we will ask chat gpt what is the capital of india so you can see that the chat gpt is typing the capital of india is new delhi and it has been responded to our mobile device so this is how we can integrate chat gpt on a whatsapp and this would be the simple tutorial in this you don't need to code any uh, this there would be another tutorial if you know what's behind the code or what behind the integration part so you could watch that video and know how we have integrated but in this tutorial i will guide you with how to download the files and how to run the files and how you can integrate chat gpt on your device to start integrating chat gpt on our device so for that first you have to download this repository and it contains some files and i will upload some more files here you just have to download it download the zip file and after downloading it you just need to extract it in a folder So we'll extract in C drive in Python projects. Mainly we create the folder here only. So here we'll create a folder. Okay, integrate chat GPT in WhatsApp main or yeah. Right, integrate chat GPT. That's it. So inside this folder, we'll extract the files. And I think <coughs> it's been done so we'll just visit c drive uh, python projects and inside it we have integrate chat gpt and we have these two files so to run these two files what you need is you need python installed on your system and golang installed on your system so i hope you guys know how to install python and golang if you don't i will just give you a quick tutorial so to download the python you just need to visit the python.org website and move to the download section and you will see the download the latest version for windows you just need to click that and the download will start for you the package has been downloaded so i will provide you the link on how to download the python in the description box and also the link for the github repository so you don't have to search it anywhere also you can search it on the browser just write integrate chat gpt in whatsapp and abhisar ahuja you will get the github link and just write github also in the search bar you will just redirect it to this <coughs> and now you have downloaded the python so just open the exe file and start with the installation so you can choose add python.exe to path you can choose that and customize installation and just tick on the python test suite and the next you can add the python to environment variables so you have to tick both these options and then you will click on the install as i have already installed it so i won't need to install it again you just need to click on the install button and here you will get the python installed okay and the other thing you need is golang go language so to download it you have to go <coughs> sorry you have to go to its official website and go to the download section and here you will see the microsoft windows as i am working on the windows operating system so i will download for the windows i have already downloaded it and installed it so you guys can download it and i will show you like this is simple how to install golang you don't need to add anything so it's been downloaded okay to guide through the installation okay so we are just waiting for the setup to be initialized so that we can 
install it now you can see the next button is available just click on that and a previous version of go programming is currently installed yes you can see that it's already installed so you don't need to do anything in installing the go language just click on install and it would be installed for you so i won't be installing it again as i already installed on my device so moving on now what we'll do first we'll run the server.py file so for that we will go to the folder where we have extracted our files and here we'll open the command prompt and run the file server.py so to run a python file we have to write the command python and then the name of the file that is server and its extension that is py so we have initiated that okay uh, firefox is already running as we have not closed what we have opened for the demo uh, i think uh, it's an error i will again run the command prompt i will just close the previous command prompts yeah i have closed them now i will open the new one <clears throat> and you should open the command prompt the new command prompt after installing the python and the go language i will also assist you in installing the gcc compiler because you would be needing that for go language so first we'll run the server file so you could see that by running the python server.py file you could see that the chat gpt has opened up <coughs> in the firefox browser so i will show you the code what we need for that you need to install the flask system os modules playwright module and here in the 16th line you could see that we have used firefox you could use chromium for chrome but the case is you need to do the one step verification that is the capture thing for you know, like initializing the chat gpt but we don't need that so we are using the firefox so you should have firefox on your system now what i want you to do is just install these modules as if you if these modules would not be installed on your system it would show an error it would give you an error in the command prompt only as i have already installed them so it's not giving me any error so i will tell you the commands to install them <coughs> So to install flask, you can just write pypi space flask in any browser and it will direct to the website. <coughs> so you could open the first link that would be pypi.org and this is a command pip install flask. So you can just copy that and open your command prompt. First we'll create it control C and now you could see that we are in the folder integrate chat gpt and here you could paste this command and press enter <coughs> it states that that the requirement is already satisfied as i have already <coughs> installed these modules and the other module you need is playwright so just copy the command go to your command prompt and paste this command and press enter it would be installed for you and another module you need is virtual environment so just copy this and paste in your command prompt and another module you need is <coughs> the os module os sys system uh, and we'll open the py pi that is the official website the pip command website and you just copy the command go to your command prompt paste the command and press enter and this module would also be installed for you guys and now you have installed the go language the python language and the modules you need to run the server.py file now what you need to do is run the go file but before running the golang file what you need is <coughs> gcc compiler so to download it i will provide you the link for the gcc or you could just see here I'll provide you the link in the description box below 
you could just click on that you would be redirected to this page just click on this release that was 24th may and what you need to download is this 64 plus 32 bit just download it and as it gets downloaded just open it and click on the create button and after that the second option then next and the directory you want to install in as i already installed this i will choose the c directory only in c i would install in python projects okay <coughs> okay didn't took the folder in c oh sorry oh, cancel it in python projects and in the same folder that was integrate chat gpt <coughs> okay so i'll click on next is no time to show to install it. yes i want to install here and when you click on install it would get installed for you guys i've already installed it <sighs> and the process started so it will get installed again <clears throat> so now what you have to do is you have got the all the requirements to integrate the chat gpt on whatsapp that is all the modules for the server.py file and the main.go file for that you have installed the go language and the gcc compiler so you could run both the files and for that <coughs> we will close the command prompts and open the new command prompts and this is a folder so we will open one com command prompt here sorry and we have to open different command prompts for both the files for the uh, golang file and the python file okay so we'll open the command prompt here and now to run the golang file we need to write the command go space run space the name of the file and the extension that is main.go and we have executed the file and this file will provide us with a qr code and we'll scan this qr code from our first device in which we want to integrate the chat gpt and before that we will run our another file that is server.py file and for that we will open another command prompt <coughs> and to run this command to run this file we will write the command python space the name of the file that is server and the extension .py So we'll see whether a QR code is generated or not. And I can see that it's been linked to the previous device as we have done in the demo. So we haven't logged it out. So I will check with the device. Yeah. <clears throat> it's been active. So I will just log out from that device. And run it again. Or I will open another command prompt to run the Golang file again. So to run it, <coughs> we'll open the command prompt and write the command cmd for that. And here we'll write the command to run the go file. And we have done that and if we see the server.py file yeah it has been perfectly executed uh, but we are not able to yeah our chat GPT is running fine now what we have to do is use our first device to scan this QR code so that chat gpt gets linked to our first device 
and then we'll use another device to chat with the chat GPT. So now we have opened our first device and open the WhatsApp and click on the link devices and here we will scan this QR code and you can see that it's logging in now it's logged in and now from the another device we'll ask a query to chat GPT and we'll ask chat GPT to write a code to add two integers and that one python so we just misspelled python but we hope that our chat GPT understood that <clears throat> so here we can see that the chat GPT code the command and it has and a good example so here's an example code to add two integers in python so you can see that chat GPT has been integrated and we'll see its response yeah we got the response and now we'll ask another question and that would be what is the currency of united states <clears throat> let's see what it responds the currency of united states is the united states dollar it is the most commonly used currency in international transaction and is the world's primary reserve currency so we can see that tell it writes all the lines or sentences <clears throat> it's been executed on the browser and after it completes or it stops generating the answer it sends it to the whatsapp chat so here we are done with a project now you guys have understood how to integrate chat GPT with whatsapp and what you have done is we have downloaded the repository and we have to extract all the files that are present in the repository i will update all the files you just have to extract them into a folder and then run the main.go file and the server.py file and before executing these files you need to have golang and python installed on your system and for the python you need some modules that we have seen that is the playwright module the flask module the os system module and the virtual environment module so we have seen how to install them and when you will just execute the file on the command prompt you would get errors if these files or modules are not installed on your system and for golang we have installed the gcc compiler and after installing all these requirements then you have to just run both the files and when you run the golang file you will get the qr code just scan it with your device on which you want to integrate the chat gpt and after that from any device you can just message on that number on which you have integrated the chat gpt and the chat gpt would answer all your queries we are gonna automate whatsapp using python by pivot kit library and with the help of chat gpt and before starting i have a quiz question for you guys and your question is how much did meta that is formerly facebook spend to acquire whatsapp in 2014 and your options are your first option is dollar 10 billion dollars second option is 19 million dollars third option is 20 billion dollars and the fourth option is 21 billion dollars please answer in the comment section below and we'll update the correct answer in the pinned comment. You can pause the video, give it a thought, and answer in the comment section. So, moving on. Now, we'll move to create our project. So, first, we'll create a folder for the project. And for that, we will create a folder in Python projects. And we'll name it as automate WhatsApp using ChatGPT. 
okay and inside this we'll open the command prompt and open our id that is we want to automate the whatsapp using python and with the help of chat gpt we won't write the code on our own we will ask chat gpt to automate it we will create the file and name it as main.py and now we will move to chat gpt and ask chat gpt to write a code to send messages through whatsapp using python and the pivot kit library so we will give a command send message through whatsapp using python and by what kit let's see what chat gpt responds to us and we have also created the automate whatsapp using python video i will just link in the i button you can check that out and we'll see what chat gpt tells us okay so country code message minutes yeah it could work and first you need to install the pivot kit library by running pip install pivot kit in your terminal or command prompt okay replace target phone number with the target phone number you want to send the message to country code with the country code of the target phone number message with the message you want to send R with the RN 24 hour format and you want to send message and minute with the minute you want to send the message okay for example yeah <clears throat> okay put it so we'll copy this code and paste in our ID but before that first you need to install the pivot kit library and for that you can go to the command prompt and write the command pip space install space pivot kit and press enter it states that the requirement is already satisfied as i have already installed this module and you can install it by writing the simple command and you will get it installed and if you face any error in installing it just comment down and we would be very happy to resolve your queries okay so as chat gpt states we will just enter the things it want from us so it's asking the target phone number and the country code without plus sign okay So here we'll just write all the things, but uh, as you can see, it has also given us an example to see and work on the code. So here we'll just clear it. I will write the phone number to whom I want to send the message so it would be and i would just blur this number so you guys won't be able to see okay and here we'll just add the country code and that is without plus sign okay so my country code is you can search it that is i live in india and the message i want to send to him is hello how are you and now we'll set the hour and minute so the current time is 15 14 so we'll set
16 okay we'll save this and run it so it says that the country code is missing so we'll just copy the error and give it to chat jpt as we are taking the help of chat jpt in this video so he has given us the code so we'll just provide the error to him let's see what it states if it's not able to resolve this then we will resolve it country code present the phone number you're trying to send okay yes and the country code is nine one to send the message correctly you need to make sure okay hmm one two three four five six seven eight nine yeah mention nine in the person I provided the provided phone number is this and the country code is nine one okay you need to make sure that the country code is prefix to the phone number like this two three four five six seven eight nine okay uh, okay we don't have to make this thing yeah now we'll run it again okay it's a string only So I will write the phone number again. This one, two, three, six. Okay, now we'll see. And what I will do? I will write the country code here. We'll save this, and the time is fifteen seventeen now. So we just turn it to fifteen eighteen. Save this and run it. So our code has been executed successfully. That is in twenty second WhatsApp will open and after fifteen seconds message will be delivered. So we just have to see that we have enter the time as fifteen eighteen. Is the seconds available for the code to get executed yeah it has opened the whatsapp it will take time as my whatsapp has loads of chats and contacts yeah i have to scan it I don't think it would be able as we have reached the 15 18 Yeah, I've scanned it. Let's see if it will deliver the message or not. Else, we have to change the time. So we just have to wait for fifteen seconds let's see okay <clears throat> just stop the terminal and run it again for 15 21 so we'll save this and run it again 
it states that in 85 seconds whatsapp will open and after 15 seconds message will be delivered so we'll get fast forwarded here so we are still waiting let's see when it will open the whatsapp okay it states that the phone number shared by url is invalid okay i'll just check the phone number again okay i entered the wrong phone number <sighs> sorry guys So I will just update the time again and it would be 1522 we'll make it fast we'll run this okay it says that the call time must be greater than so we'll write 1523 save it we will make the time as 1527 save it and run it Okay, it states that in 40 seconds WhatsApp will open and after 15 seconds message will be delivered. It has opened the WhatsApp. And it has started the chat. Okay, it has return the and we have sent it to hello how are you that's good on that note we present you postgraduate program in ai and machine learning elevate your professional journey by enrolling in this ai and ml course presented through a partnership between purdue university and ibm hurry up and enroll now Find the complete course details from the link mentioned in the description box below. See how ChatGPT can help you to make a great app. So here we have ChatGPT. Okay, you can write here chat.openair.com. So here I will ask to ChatGPT what is ChatGPT. So I will here write what is ChatGPT. So here you can stop generating if you want to. Okay, I will stop generating. Okay, so ChatGPT is a conversational artificial intelligence model developed by OpenAI. It is based on the GPT generative pre-trained transform architecture, specifically GPT 3.5, which is an advanced language model. So GPT 3.5 is trained on a massive amount of text data to generate human-like response to wide range of prompts and questions. You can ask anything to ChatGPT. Okay after coming chat gpt software developers are safe software developer jobs are safe acknowledging <clears throat> see Yes, after the introduction of ChatGPT and similar language models, software developers still have important roles and their jobs remain relevant. While AI models like ChatGPT can generate text and provide automated response, they have limitations. See, they have limitations. ChatGPT have limitations and cannot rep replace the skills and expertise of human software developers. So here is a few reasons why software developer jobs remain valuable. Okay, so here are the few reasons. So you can ask anything to chat GPT. So what we will do, we will create a small, small gaming app. Okay. So here I will write, uh, let's make first tic-tac-toe. 
okay so here i will write give me the code for tick tac to game see it will give you the step by step chat gpt will explain you everything see this board then player check columns check diagonals play game everything see check for the winner play game everything see to play the game simply run the python script players will take turn centering the row column numbers to make their moves the game will okay so what i will do okay first i will ask the steps to make a game tic tac toe okay give me these steps to make game tic tac toe see first it will uh, we will ask for these steps then we will ask for the code chat gpt can make your app in 2 3 minutes in just 2 3 minutes small small app in 2 3 minutes okay see what what is the first step set up the game board create a data structure to represent the tic tac toe board this can be 3 by 3 grid or nested list with initial empty values okay for example this then second is the print the game board write a function to display the current state of the board on the screen this will help player visualize the game and the third is get player input from the player to enter their moves accept the input for the rows and columns where the players want to place their symbol x or 0 okay or you can change the value x or 0 whatever cross right okay update the board after receiving the player input update the game board with their move make sure the validate the move and check if the selected position is empty okay then check for the winner then check for it is draw or what then alternate turns okay then repeat 2 to 7 until the game ends optional add additional features we will first we will make tic tac toe uh, uh, what you can say a simple tic tac toe then we will add the additional features on this okay using chat gpt only okay so i will write to wide me the tic tac toe game code what we will do we will uh, open the visual studio and copy it directly okay see current player is x then o see current player o the second player switch player okay what we will do we will copy it from here and we will open see visual studio that new file i will write here tick tag to dot py okay enter i will save it so here i will directly copy the code where is my code oh it's, it comes in okay copied this also copied the whole thing okay i have to remove this or i can make it you know comment yeah so let's try to run it what terminal says see enter the row okay to enter the column to okay it made like this okay what i will do I will ask for the GUI. <coughs> uh, provide me the tic tac toe game with GUI. Okay. Now the Tinker came. Tinker is Python library used for the GUI in Python. Now uh, we'll copy the code and just paste it. 
it will run okay with GUI and then we will add the additional features okay from here now I am copying the code now select all replace with this code like here no error no red sign so let me play it it will run I guess no problems okay what happened see as you can see we got the tic tac toe game okay so see here x zero x zero x player x wins so let me add the additional features in this so what we will do we'll go to chat gpt again we'll ask for the additional features see note the code above uses the message box module from the tinker for displaying messages ensure that you have compatible version to tinker okay when you run this code a graphical windows will appear by 3 by 3 grip and this uh, okay players can click on the buttons to make them move the game state will okay <clears throat> okay update you can you know talk to chat gpt so I'm, i will say update my code with some good font and scoreboard scoreboard font scoreboard and color update my gui code i can write <coughs> Here is an update see right certainly here is an updated version of gui code with improved font scoreboard and color if you get error in this you can ask to chat gpt okay anything you are facing issue about your code whatever it is you can ask directly to chat gpt see we created an app in like two minutes just in two minutes so chat gpt is making our life easier okay let me copy this code okay let's see the changes what what chat gpt does okay there's nothing changed i guess player x wins like this cross okay okay uh, i will write here see in this updated code the font style has been improved with a bold aerial font the buttons have a custom background color and the overall window and discover have a different color oh i didn't feel like this i didn't feel like this <coughs> okay so change uh, the grid style of the game it's giving updating the board see to change the grid style of the same you can modify appearance of the buttons and the spacing between them is an updated version GUI code with a modified grid style It's just a little bit of time taking, that's it, nothing else. It's very useful, ChatGPT. You can create your app in 2-3 minutes only. Okay. Continue generating, it's a half code. code is copied let me select and paste it here and check see player x 0 player o 0 ok it's little bit different I guess x. ok this 1 2 3 box why these lines there ok who cares player x wins ok see the scoreboard is updated ok so this is how you can make your tic-tac-toe 
more beautiful okay uh, let me write here let me write here i want the black and white boxes okay or colorful boxes so um, good provide me the code for the colorful boxes okay okay here chat gpt wrote certainly here is an updated version of the code with colorful boxes instead of grid lines okay so wait waiting for the code update the code See in this updated code, each player's button X and O has a specific color assigned to it. The button colors. Okay, let me copy the code and paste it here and run it. See, the color is changed. Here I will write C X and O X O X O X player X wins. Okay. So this is how you can make your app more beautiful, beautiful using customization. You can ask chat GPT anything, color, style, font or any function, anything you can ask and you, you can make your app more beautiful. Okay. So now let's move on to the next uh, game, which I want a snake game. Okay. Using pie game we will make. So here I will write please provide me the code of snake game using Pygame Python okay everyone knows what is a snake game <clears throat> or first you want to ask the steps we can ask the steps okay after this I will ask the steps okay so till then let's make a new file of snake game dot py okay let me close it see so it's a long code i guess just continue generating now you can see the see the food and all will come okay you can ask anything like any question any language question this code sets up the basic structure for the snake game using pi game it includes the functionality for displaying the snake controlling this movement detecting collision with the boundaries and food and managing the score you can run the code and play the snake game with pi game window feel free to customize see at the end what ChatGPT wrote, feel free to customize and enhance the game according to your preference. Okay, that is what I was talking about. You can change n number of times. You can ask n number of times for the code, new, new code. Okay. There is one. Why this error is coming? Mm, import by game could not be resolved by lens. What is this by lens? Okay. Let me ask to chat GPT only. What is violence? Violence is a language server for Python developed by Microsoft. It provides advanced language features including code completion, type checking, static analysis, and code navigation. The violence is built on the top of language server. Okay. Let me give the error itself copy message okay I will write debug error violence okay sure you have a pi game installed pi game is already installed on my okay installed in a python environment open your command prompt or terminal 
and run the following command okay let me open the command prompt okay then what i have to write let me copy the code and paste it here what is this okay version c this is this is this if pygame is not installed you can reinstall by running already installed i guess oh, ensure the pylens is using the correct python interior verify that pylens is configured to use the same path which you have installed by game you can check the python interpreter setting in your code editor or id which make sure it's point to correct path environment where pi game is installed okay what i will do i will go to terminal and here i will write pip install pi game okay maybe it will be helpful Okay, let me do this. What chat is it? Pip install by game. Okay, successful install new pip. Some error of by game, I guess. Okay, we'll run it online. No worries. If it won't work in this, I will run it online. Okay. See, see, the requirement is already satisfied in this, 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 this. So what we will do? Uh, we will open the applet. Okay. We'll open the applet and we'll create the new REPL. Okay. Then Python. <clears throat> okay this is the same like you know one of the id you can say okay then what i will i will copy this space code and paste it here okay i will make a new file its name dot py on that i will copy the code and i will run it okay the update updating the package and the poetry and the pi game okay it's running the code is running okay it's installing pi game okay let me run now What happened? What's the error? What's the error? Okay. Okay, so um, hello from Pygame community. This is Pygame. Uh, yeah. There is one file main dot pyl and my some game loop module file main dot pyl sixty eight. Okay. Okay, we'll ask to chat GPT. <coughs> Snake game code showing error. Okay. Provide me give snake 
game code using python gui this time from turtle okay let's see because the pi games i don't know pi game is installed on my system it's not working so we will leave it okay we'll ask from this uh, some good gui with some good gui see it is the head everything is there the keyboard bindings from wsd or you can up down left right the keys you can use from use the both okay continue generating then the functions the pen the snake body everything is here snake head is like everything is here what you want everything is here see the code utilize the turtle module to be, create the basic game with the snake then moves collect food the, the score is displayed okay feel free to let me copy the code let me copy here only and run it see <clears throat> this is the snake okay this is the food this is the score or high score okay i will uh, run it okay see you can customize your snake your uh, food everything see the score previous time the score was 10 the high score now it changes okay the score is 30 now i am enjoying the game so this is how you can customize your you know game okay let me play the game okay see this is how you can make any game or any small small game in two two three three minutes okay so uh, go to chat gpt and you want the you know change the color of the snake or the food anything you can do using chat gpt okay artificial intelligence large language models and ai chatbots have come a long way and today we have many ai language models which are helping us throughout various domains Few examples are Microsoft's Bing, Google's Bard, OpenAI's ChatGPT, Megatron, T5, and many more. Today, we will be discussing about the caliber of ChatGPT and AI, which can leverage you and help you to build a perfect business. So, few of the reasons that you need to consider are the decision making capabilities of ChatGPT and AI, customer services that you can offer through ChatGPT and AI, ChatGPT potential to create content and its potential to leverage data analysis and chat gpt's and ai capabilities to provide sales and marketing for you and run automation for you we will discuss each one of these in detail so the first one is decision making capabilities of chat gpt in terms of raw processing speed chat gpt can analyze and generate text at a rapid pace capable of processing and generating responses much faster than a human can type or think it can quickly access and retrieve information from its pre-trained knowledge providing intermediate answers to suggestions therefore chat gpt excels in processing and generating text at higher speeds however it cannot be directly compared to humans in terms of decision making abilities however it is proof that it is 90 percent accurate in decision making whereas humans tend to be accurate at a rate of 80 to 85 percent chat gpt is anyways stronger in terms of decision making at this case followed by that moving ahead to the next reason that is the customer service that chat gpt and ai can help you with if you compare a human the customer support representative reads the customer care compared to human the customer support representative has to read a customer's query analyze the problem and formulate a response this process may take a few minutes or more depending on the complexity of the issue and representative's typing speed, right? But when you compare it with ChatGPT, the AI-powered chatbot like ChatGPT quickly scans and comprehends the customer's query, 
it generates a response within milliseconds providing intermediate assistance as well so ChatGPT is proficient at providing customer services at a much faster rate and it can also eliminate you the cost of hiring training and maintaining an entire army of customer services moving ahead we have content creation if you are a startup company or a company which needs content creation for your product then obviously you might end up hiring freelancers or a team of content creators right but compared to humans chat gpt is proficient at generating content and can produce coherent and contextually relevant text so you can even save money by using the most powerful and fully operational ai model to create more versatile and highly qualified content for you to avoid hiring freelancers and employees now moving ahead the next reason is using ai models for business data analysis ai can assist you in data analysis by leveraging its computational power and advanced algorithms to possess and extract valuable insights from large and complex data sets ai algorithms can automate data cleaning pattern recognition and anomaly detection tasks enabling faster and more accurate results ai models can also perform predictive analytics identifying trends and making forecasts based on historical data additionally AI can facilitate data visualization, presenting information in intuitive and interactive formats for better understanding. By automating repetitive tasks and augmenting human capabilities, AI enhances the proficiency, efficiency, accuracy, and scalability of data analysis procedures. You can rely on AI language model to extract, transform, and load data and analyze your business data, generate reports, draw projections, and make data driven decisions to help grow your company and this also avoids you to hire and maintain a huge army of data analysts which may produce some or the other errors in real time right and next reason is sales and marketing chat gpt can leverage sales and marketing efforts in the following ways customer engagement chat gpt can engage with potential customers in real time answering their queries, providing product information, and guiding them through sales process. It enhances customer experience by delivering prompt and personalized responses. Next is lead generation. ChatGPT can act as a virtual assistant, collecting and qualifying leads by interacting through website visitors. It can gather relevant information, access customer needs, and provide initial assistance, generating valuable leads for the sales team. 24-7 support. ChatGPT's ability to operate around the clock allows for continuous customer support. It can address inquiries, offer product recommendations, and resolve issues even outside regular business hours, improving customer satisfaction and retention. Now, instead of hiring a team and manually marketing your product on social media platforms and spending thousands of dollars to run paid marketing, you can use AI models to crack the algorithms and market the product to your target audience. With that, let's proceed to the next reason, that is automating your tasks. ChatGPT can automate business procedures in the following ways. The first one being customer service. ChatGPT can handle customer inquiries, provide support, and resolve common issues through automated chat interactions. It reduces need for human intervention, saves time, and enables 24-7 customer support. Lead qualifications. ChatGPT can engage with potential customers, ask qualifying questions, and, and gather information to assess their suitability as leads. It automates the initial stages of lead qualification, enabling sales team to focus on most promising prospects only. Next is data entry and processing. ChatGPT can automate data entry tasks by extracting relevant information from various sources such as forms, emails, or documents. It reduces manual effort improving accuracy and speeds up the data processing appointment scheduling chat gpt can integrate with scheduling systems allowing customers to book appointments or schedule meetings automatically finally workflow automation chat gpt can integrate with business systems and automate workflows it can initiate actions send notifications or trigger processes based on predefined rules streamlining operations and improving efficiency by automating various tasks and processes, ChatGPT enhances productivity, reduces operational costs, and frees up human resources for focusing on higher value activities with their business. 
So these were the few important ways and reasons why chat GPT and AI can help you make your business. Is to generate passive income without putting in too much effort thanks to the advancement in artificial intelligence and chatbots. It's now possible to earn money using these technologies. In this video, we'll explore some of the effective ways to generate passive income with ChatGPT. ChatGPT is known for being the world's smartest generative AI and is changing the game when it comes to making money online. With this revolutionary free tool, you can earn with little skill and no capital required. There is an exciting new era of artificial intelligence and now is the perfect time to get involved and take advantage of this opportunity. People are using ChatGPT for YouTube, blogging, freelancing and for many other ways to make money. So let's dive in and discover how to make money using ChatGPT and generate various passive incomes. There are a variety of ways that you can make money using ChatGPT. We'll discuss few of them in this video and we'll start with first we'll see the list of all the ideas from which you can make money. The first is get business ideas from ChatGPT. Second is freelancing. Third is build a software. Fourth is boost your affiliate marketing with ChatGPT's email expertise. Fifth is leverage ChatGPT for blogging success. The next is unlock the potential of ChatGPT for affiliate marketing. And then we have utilized ChatGPT for ebook writing and self publishing. This is the main thing what people are doing to make money using ChatGPT. And then we have utilized ChatGPT to enhance your YouTube channel. And then we have writing lyrics for music. So, starting them one by one, we'll start with get business ideas from ChatGPT. By getting to know your interest, talent, and obstacles. ChatGPT can generate tailored business concepts that align with your expectations. Let's dive right in and ask ChatGPT for some business ideas for a computer science engineer who has experience in digital marketing and sales. Ask ChatGPT and ask him that I am a computer science graduate or computer science engineer with experience in sales and marketing. What side hustle should I start generate around thousand dollars generate thousand dollars income that would be per day and that would be with minimum investment I want and it's not over per day with minimum investment. And I can also tell him how many hours I can dedicate. So I can dedicate eight to ten hours. Okay, uh, yeah, eight to ten hours to this side as well. Press enter. So you could see that Chat GPT replies us that as a computer science engineer. With expense in sales and marketing, there's several side hustles to generate thousand dollars income per day. And he has stated the first one is e-commerce, then affiliate marketing, digital products. You can create and sell digital products such as ebooks, okay, freelancing, social media management, and YouTube channel. You can start your YouTube channel. So these are the ideas that you can get from ChatGPT. And but these ideas tailored to user skills and interests that I have put in. Now it's time to take these ideas and discuss them further with ChatGPT to conceptualize a plan. So consider important factors like alternatively you can begin by stating generate a new business idea for digital products. You can write that and he will guide you how you can start it or you could just write can you elaborate the business idea of digital products I am going to start the side hustle with this and then you press enter and you can see that it has started the process for the business idea certainly starting a side hustle centered around digital products can be lucrative and fulfilling venture identify your expertise determine your areas of knowledge skills and passion and then he has stated choose your product format create valuable content set up an online platform 
market your products, build an audience, optimize for conversions, provide excellent customer support. So these are the paths he has stated and moreover you can elaborate those paths also. You can just ask ChatGPT. So how can I identify my expertise and he will guide you with that. So you can go deep down and explore any business idea. So this was the first method through which you can generate income from ChatGPT. And moving on, the next would be freelancing. So take your freelancing game to the next level with ChatGPT. This state of the art AI tool is enabling professionals to earn extra income and produce top quality content that woes clients. Companies are even offering incentives for those who utilize this technology to create polished, well-researched work. So here are some freelance services that you can offer using ChatGPT. Starting with, you can write blog or website content using ChatGPT for others. You can translate any language with ChatGPT. You can craft compelling headlines and calls to action with ChatGPT. And moreover, you can do create social media content for posts or marketing for other people or any advertising agency. You can write captivating short stories using ChatGPT and you can conduct hashtag research using ChatGPT. That is, you can find what is trending and offer your services to other people and gain money. So these are the ways in which you could freelance and have some money in your pockets. Uh, you could just write a command that would be write a blog post and you could write on any topic that would be write a blog post on US economy. So you could use this AI tool as your means like what the what your client required you can use for that and write the perfect without plagiarism content that would be blog post and you can translate any language with ChatGPT. you can write competitive headlines and calls and you can also write social media content that would be you can use SEO research for that and you can write short stories also see that he has given you the blog post on the topic US economy the navigating uh, the title is navigating the current state of the US economy trends and insights and you can see that it has given you six points and if you want more you can just ask him to elaborate elaborate this and I want this blog post in 800 words so the thing you just have to do is write the script write the prompt you have to just prompt scripting and that too in the easy language that is in english and you will get all your answers from the chat gpt so now it will write the blog post that would be in 800 words so that's good and moving on what we'll do let's check out one of our learners what he has to say about our courses you need to keep updating your skills on a regular basis, no matter what level you're at. I recently completed the professional certificate program in AI and machine learning from Simply Learn in partnership with Purdue University. The course material was comprehensive and the faculty was extremely experienced. Uh, the faculty was able to adjust their teaching style in order to cater to the overall skill set of the class. In the rapidly evolving world of technology, it's important to keep upskilling for every working professional. Stay relevant, continue learning. Now coming back, so the third passive income you could make using ChatGPT is building a software. Imagine this scenario, you have an issue with your online business and you realize that many other people are facing the same problem. Well, here's where ChatGPT comes to the rescue. You can utilize ChatGPT to create software using the code provided by the AI. And then you can sell these software tools to make money. It's as simple as that. By leveraging ChatGPT's powerful capabilities, you can develop innovative solutions to common problems and turn them into valuable software tools. Whether it's automating a task, streamlining a process, or providing a unique service, the possibilities are endless. Once you have created your software tools, you can market them to a target audience, researching out to those who can benefit from your solution. And guess what? People are always looking for convenient and efficient software tools to enhance their business. So there's a ready market waiting for you. So selling software tools not only allows you to earn a steady income, but also empowers others to overcome challenges and improve their own ventures. It's a win-win situation. 
So if you are a problem solver and have a knack of for coding, why not use ChatGPT to create software tools that can make a real impact? Start by identifying common pain points. That also you can ask from ChatGPT. You can just ask the ChatGPT, I want to create a software to help others during or in online processes, in online e-commerce. So he will give you suggestions and then you can proceed with those suggestions and create a software. And then you can sell it or you can use for your own use. So now embrace the power of ChatGPT. Tap into its coding expertise and unlock the potential to create and sell software tools. So your journey to financial success starts right here. And moving on, we'll move to the next income source that we can gain from ChatGPT. So you can boost your affiliate marketing with ChatGPT's email expertise. So do you know that ChatGPT possesses exceptional writing skills? It's true. This incredible chatbot can draft convincing emails that motivate users to take action, whether it's clicking on affiliate links making purchases or subscribing to services. ChatGPT has got you covered. That's impressive ability to generate engaging content. You can captivate your audience and compel them to take the desired actions. So we'll get back to the ChatGPT and ask him that I am an email marketer. And need to sell my CRM software. So write an email for me so I can attract customer and make them bite. Okay. Now you could see that it is writing email for you and you can launch your email affiliate marketing campaign also now that we understand the power of chat gpt let's discuss how you can kickstart your email affiliate marketing campaign the first step is to choose an affiliate program that aligns with your niche whether it's amazon spotify shopify convertkit or any other program make sure it suits your target audience next it's time to build an email list of potential customers who are generally interested in your promoted products or services you can use lead magnets or employ other effective methods to encourage email signups. You could see that he has written the email. That is, I hope this email finds you well as an email marketer. Okay, uh, this is for me. And you could start from here at your company. We have developed a powerful CRM solution tailored specifically for email marketers like yourself. Our software combines advanced features user friendly. Okay, he has written for uh, email marketers only he has targeted audience that is email marketer no issue you can ask him to change that and like you can craft compelling emails with chat GPT. and this is where chat GPT truly shines with its assistance you can create highly engaging emails that not only inform users about the benefits of the products but also inspire them to click on your affiliate links and make purchases imagine having a chatbot by your site imagine having a chatbot by your site helping you write captivating emails effortlessly by incorporating persuasive language, compelling storytelling, and personalized touch, your emails will stand out in crowded inboxes and generate higher click-through rates. So this is how ChatGPT can help you in email marketing. Now the next method is leverage ChatGPT for blogging success. In the realm of blogging, ChatGPT offers an array of advantages that can elevate your content creation journey. So the first is content generation so unleash the power of this ai driven tool to spank your creativity and overcome writer's block chat gpt assists bloggers by generating ideas crafting outlines and even providing complete drafts for blog posts say goodbye to hours spent on research with chat gpt you can access relevant information statistics and facts in mere seconds elevate your blogging game and unleash your potential with this invaluable source and then you can edit and proofread using chat gpt if you have written any content and get any content written you could just write what we have already written that was write a blog post on us economy that we have seen in freelancing uh, side hustle but here you can write and not only write but also if you have added some points with your research you can proofread and edit by using chat gpt that is, for bloggers, ChatGPT proves to be a valuable asset by offering assistance in editing, proofreading, and enhancing the overall readability of your blog post. It provides suggestions and corrections for spelling, 
grammar and comprehension reducing errors and ensuring clarity let chat gpt refine your writing and ensure your blog posts shine with professionalism the next what you can do for your blogging journey is keyword research and seo optimization so this is a fundamental aspect of successful blogging chat gpt becomes your trusted companion in optimizing your blog post for search engines it suggests relevant keywords to include guides you on structuring your content for maximum visibility and offers tips to enhance your online presence maximize your blog's reach and attract more organic traffic in chat gpt's seo expertise and then we have audience engagement and i will also show you how we can relate keywords so for seo you could just search that would be give me related seo keywords seo keywords or and the topic could be online shopping and press enter so here are some related seo keywords for online shopping you could see all these you could mention these on your backlinks if you have website or you could add into your blog post hashtags which can gain you rank when searched so moving back the next was audience engagement so engaging your audience is key to building a thriving blog chat gpt can assist you in connecting with your readers on a deeper level it provides conversation starters answer common questions and addresses concerns from your audience by leveraging chat gpt's capabilities you can foster meaningful interactions cultivate a loyal following and forge lasting connections with your readers by harnessing the power of chat gpt bloggers can consistently produce high quality content captivate their target audience bolster their online presence and generate passive income embrace the potential of chat gpt and embark on an exciting blogging journey to to leave a lasting impact so moving on we'll now see another side hustle that is unlock the potential of chat gpt for affiliate marketing and you could do easily affiliate marketing if you have this blogging thing so affiliate marketing opens up a world of earning possibilities and chat gpt can be your trusted ally on this rewarding journey users of chat gpt can leverage its capabilities to generate income through affiliate marketing this powerful tool provides a seamless avenue for promoting goods services and brands all while earning a commission based on resulting sales embarking on an affiliate marketing venture requires thoughtful planning as a blogger or content creator you must carefully select the medium through which you will build your audience whether it's through captivating articles engaging audio content or compelling videos you have the freedom to choose the format that aligns with your strengths and resonates with your target audience when you have established your audience building medium chat gpt steps in to support your affiliate marketing efforts this ai driven tool empowers you to craft persuasive content that effectively promotes the products or services you are affiliated with by collaborating with chat gpt you can tap into its exceptional writing skills and create captivating promotional materials that resonate with your audience as you implement your affiliate marketing strategy chat gpt becomes an invaluable resource it helps you draft engaging articles record compelling audio content or script captivating videos that highlight the benefits and value of the products or services that you are promoting so remember affiliate marketing is a process that requires dedication and perseverance through consistent effort and the support of chat gpt you can unlock the potential of earning substantial income by promoting products and services that resonate with your audience and this was for the affiliate marketing and the next big thing is utilize chat gpt for ebook writing and self publishing so are you a passionate writer seeking fresh and innovative ideas look no further chat gpt revolutionizes your writing experience in a recent report that revealed that ai written ebooks have experienced a remarkable surge on amazon so you could just go on chat gpt and ask him I want to write a self help book at to plagiarism free okay, I think yeah now spelling is correct plagiarism free and it sh- should have resonating chapters resonating chapters so write me with a list of 
chapters. As you can see that it will define you and you can also ask the title for the book and it will give you the perfect title and you can see the chapters that is introducing setting the stage for personal growth discovering your authentic self cultivating a positive mindset and after that you can ask ChatGPT to elaborate these topics that would be in some words in some pages and you can use the same content to write a book and you can also ask the title from the chat GPT. so with chat GPT, as your creative companion the possibilities are boundless you don't need to possess the skills of literary genius to make an impact in the ebook market kindle direct publishing offers a seamless platform to showcase your book and make it easily accessible to enthusiastic readers by leveraging chat GPT to assist in writing your ebook you will save precious time and energy allowing you to concentrate on marketing and promoting your work effectively so this is how you can write ebooks and generate income using ChatGPT. Moving on, we have next passive income that is utilize ChatGPT to enhance your YouTube channel. So ChatGPT is an invaluable tool that can assist you in generating captivating video ideas. You can ask him the video ideas also. And this is a creative block. ChatGPT can even go the extra mile by creating a script for your YouTube videos. So Let's tap into the creative prowess and we'll ask Jared GPT. I want to create a YouTube video. On topic uh, GDP. That is gross domestic product. And I need your help. Writing the script for that. So you could see that Chair JPT has started its work. So it's showing. Welcome back to our channel. In today's video, we'll be diving into the fascinating world of GDP. What exactly is GDP and why is it such an important measure of a country's economy? So you can see that it has created the script for your YouTube video. And it is also telling you the scenes. So this is how you could leverage chat GPT's capabilities and that can give your YouTube channel a significant boost, helping you create engaging content and capture the attention of your audience. So start exploring the possibilities with chat GPT today and witness your channel thrive. So moving on, the next we have is writing lyrics for music. So when it comes to music, the words we use in songs are super important. They have the power to make us feel all kinds of emotions and connect with people. And now there's a cool tool called ChatGPT that can help you write awesome song lyrics. With ChatGPT, you can take your ideas and turn them into beautiful words that touch people's heart. It's like having a virtual writing buddy that help you come up with catchy lines and cool rhymes. You can play around with different ways to express yourself and make your lyrics stand out. So you can chat GPT to write lyrics for you. The evolution of natural language processing has come a long way. Today, we have a variety of AI language models that are fully operational and have the potential not just to decode your question, but also smart enough to understand the intention behind your questions. Out of the countless number of development and the emerging ones like Megatron, Albert, Electra, T5 and many more, these three models are currently ruling the space of AI language models. Bing, Bard and ChatGPT. And today, we will understand the differences, similarities and the abilities that make them stand out and try to decide which one is the best. Hey everyone, welcome to Simply Learn's YouTube channel and today we bring you the Bing versus the Google Bard, the ChatGPT. But before we begin, if these are the type of videos you would like to watch, hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to never miss an update from Simply Learn. If you are an aspiring artificial intelligence engineer, 
looking for an online training and certification from the prestigious universities and in collaboration with leading experts so that you have the most robust foundation skills, knowledge and what it takes to become the best, then search no more. Simply Learn's post-graduation program in artificial intelligence from Purdue University in collaboration with IBM should be your right choice. For more details, use the link in the description box below. Also, want to get access to more informative content like this one? Get subscribed to us and hit the bell so that you're the first to get to know when we host. With that in mind, let's start with the elephant in the room, that is the chat GPT. Chat GPT was released on the 30th of November 2022. It uses the GPT LLM to elaborate. LLM is an abbreviation for large language model and ChatGPT is globally available to its users using the generative pre-trained transformer also called as ChatGPT LLM with 1 trillion parameters as its variables learned during the model training. Now the Bing. Microsoft was one of the largest investors in OpenAI. Bing is an AI language model created in collaboration with OpenAI and publicly released on the 4th of May 2023. Bing uses the same dataset that ChatGPT uses. Bing has an edge over ChatGPT as Microsoft integrates its Prometheus with about 135 billion parameters. Now, next up we have BARD. BART is Google's answer to ChatGPT with limited capabilities and lukewarm responses. It was released on 21st of March 2023. BART initially started off with Lambda LLM with a caliber of 137 billion parameters. Google's CEO assures BART will switch to pathway model named as Palm 2 LLM with about 400 billion plus parameters to take on ChatGPT head-on-head -head in generating responses and the application codes and programs. With the details discussed, let's move ahead to some of the important parameters to be considered to discuss the differences. Firstly, user interface and experience. ChatGPT has a simple and subtle interface, making it easy to understand and get along with the usage. So, ChatGPT's user interface looks something like this. ChatGPT has a simple dark theme interface focusing on providing users with high quality language processing capabilities rather than immersive visuals. You can ask questions, get answers and even you can ask to enhance or optimize the answer according to your needs. Again, user needs to manually request ChatGPT. On the other hand, Bing is more inclined towards giving a blissful visual experience to their users by choosing brilliant background images, colorful interfaces and emojis. So a typical Bing user interface looks something like this. In addition to that, it is backed up by ChatGPT's dataset and Prometheus LLM to help users with the best-in-class answers to their questions. It even delivers three different answers at the same time. Creative, balanced and precise are the three variants and you can choose the best ones which suits your requests now lastly bard bard is a little different from others unlike others bard just dumps the answers at once enthusiasts call it fast but it misses the human touch of giving the answers in a word by word typing manner yet similar to bing it manages to give you different versions of the answers besides that bard has a decent interface and its logo shines with multiple colors, giving you the feeling of part processing the data to give you a better result. Now, let's try to ask a few most frequently asked questions to part, chat GPT and Bing. Let's ask with a simple one. Are you friends with? Chat GPT and Bing. You can see the shining logo of BART and you have just seen the way how Google BART answers you. It just dumps the answer. Now, if you go or if you ask the same question to the other ones like ChatGPT and Bing, let's see how they respond. And you can see you have other drafts as well, right? So you can see draft 1, draft 2 and draft 3. So you can choose any ones which you feel are more optimized and you know deliverable according to your requests right now let's go back to ping right now let's ask the same question are you friends with chat gpt and 
but see the word by word typing approach of Bing and ChatGPT give you a little more immersive feeling that somebody is really talking to you right and you also have the freedom of choosing the answer wisely right so it gives you three different options which are creative balanced and precise right and on just one single scroll you have the Bing search open here right this is one other good way of using Bing in the in case if you have any questions that are unanswered or which did not satisfy you you can also go back to Bing and you can manually search for the data and get the information right now let's get back to chat GPT and here let's ask the same question are you friends with Bing and Bard. See? So that's how individual AI models respond to each other. And now let's get back to the next point of discussion, which is what is the data or history about the questions you asked or the prompts you have opened that each one of these stores. So this is about the conversation history or the prompt that you have with individual one of these AI models. First comes the ChatGPT. ChatGPT claims they do not store any data about its interaction with its users. But in ChatGPT, you can access the prompts and questions you asked. You can also export your transcripts in ChatGPT. On the other hand, we have Bing. Bing says they do not have any history or prompts of your previous conversations as well. And lastly, Bard. Bard is a little mix and match of both. So what Bard does is it stores only the prompts. Whereas in ChatGPT, when you ask a question, it will store the question and the answer it gave you. But Bard, it will only store the prompt, that is the question you asked and note the answer it gave to you. So with that, the next point of discussion would be the mobile version of each one of these. As of now, ChatGPT hasn't released any of the official mobile application version yet. And on the other hand, on Bing, it has just one click of a button and you can click it and Bing launches on your mobile phone. And Bing has a mobile variant with similar and much better aesthetics that can get started on a touch of an app launcher. And lastly, we have Bard. Bard has a similar approach to its mobile variant. Google has enabled Bard usage in Google mobile application as well. And now comes the number of questions asked. Disclaimer, if you want to work on a project, presentation, or thesis, choose your AI model wisely. Because if you are close to wrapping up your project and the AI model says, sorry, pal, you're out of your wishes. Yes, you heard me right. A few of these language models have a limitation on the number of questions asked on one single topic or one single keyword or one single concept. Let's look into details. Before we proceed to the next part of this video, let's take a minute to hear from our learners who have experienced massive success in their careers. Hey, I'm Shariar Jalil. I live in Ontario, Canada. I have been in IT sector for the past 20 years. I recently took the professional certificate program in artificial intelligence and machine learning. The course has changed the way I look at things and helped me back some amazing freelance projects. I started my career in 1999 and over the years I have worked with many companies. My last tenure was with IBM Canada. My aim was to restart my career and learn something that would help accelerate my career. I thought artificial intelligence can make me future ready. The course in artificial intelligence and machine learning is provided by Simply Learn in association with Purdue University, which is why I chose the course. I did not have high expectations from online course, but my experience was simply awesome. The quality of interaction within the course was simply amazing. The course faculty was also very experienced and knowledgeable. After the course, my knowledge has grown manifold. I have immensely benefited from Python and coding skills. 
I am able to get some new freelance projects. Also, I am planning to start an AI based startup with my friend where I feel that the learning from the course to be very helpful. I am really delighted and happy. In my free time, I try to create meaningful content on YouTube and I talk about new technologies and what kind of courses professionals should be taking along with many other topics. I definitely recommend this course to everyone. After all, when it comes to new skills to advance your career, there should be no compromise. You should always learn from the best. First comes ChatGPT. ChatGPT takes 25 questions on a single keyword or a single subject or a single topic of discussion. Post that, it refrains from answering your questions. Same with Bing. It takes no more than 20 questions on single keyword or a single topic or a single concept. But now comes Brad. Brad is a little different. Brad kind of set stakes a little too high. It almost has no limits to your questions. You can ask any number of questions to Brad and that can be a real deal breaker. Lastly, we will differentiate these AI models based on their productivity. Yes, exactly. We do know all these three models are smart, but how smart exactly? How humanly are they? How close are they in convincing you with an optimistic answer? What's their potential to judge a hypothetical question and give you a balanced answer? Sounds interesting, right? Let's get started. First, let's start with ChatGPT. So let's say I want to learn AI and machine learning. So obviously this should be able to teach me that. Let's ask it. Can you teach me artificial intelligence machine learning? Brilliant. It gave me a brief about artificial intelligence, machine learning, types of machine learning, and deep learning in one go. And it also convinced you here, right? Yes, as an AI model, I can certainly help you with that, right? So it's a good answer. Now, let's try to ask a little different one. Or can it plan an itinerary? Or can it buy me a product online? Or can it do some uh, other things like booking me an uber right so let's try can you purchase an online training program for ai and ml Brilliant. ChatGPT knows its limits, right? As an AI model, I cannot directly purchase online, right? It's giving you the brutal truth here. That's good. And apart from that, it also gave you a step-by-step -step procedure to buying your course. Do your research, check the curriculum, check the instructor, what's the format, what's the course, right? A few parameters which you might want to consider before buying a course. Right. So now let's try to question the same queries to Bing. So since Bing and ChatGPT share the same training data set, I could expect a similar answer. But let's see. It is taking a while. I guess Prometheus is a little slower compared to GPT. OK, there might be a connection issue. Let's ask the question once again. Wow, it's way too better than ChatGPT. So it is even asking you details on if you if you are looking for a specific topic or a general overview. Let's say I would need a general overview.
I could straight away say Bing is a little more smarter and productive compared to ChatGPT. But still, we have one more contender to compare with, Bard, right? So there might be, again, the internet connection. Now let's say we refresh Bing once again and straight away ask the second question what we had, right? That is, can you buy me a course online course for learning artificial intelligence. Bing did give me a good answer for the previous question. Let's see what kind of an answer it gives me now. I'm sorry, but I'm not capable of making online purchases. However, I can find you some online courses for learning AI. Would you like me to search for some options? Brilliant. So this is a little more optimized answer compared to ChatGPT once, and it is also honest. It does know its limits. Fine, it can help you search for some online courses. But again, uh, ChatGPT gave us some parameters to consider, right? So I would give or I would choose to tie them up here. They are on a tie. Now our last contender, that is Bart. Let's try to ask the same questions to Bart. So here is Bart. Now let's try to ask questions to Bart. Let's say, can you teach me machine learning? You can see the Bard logo shining there. Now, it should be dumping the answer anytime soon. Yeah, of course, we do miss that humanly touch of giving the answer in a word by word typing way. Let's refresh and ask the question again. Can you teach me machine learning? This is a little too straightforward. I'm a language model and don't have the capacity to help you out. So, okay, let's not give up here. Let's try to ask the second question. Can you purchase an online training program for me to learn machine learning? Yes, I can help you purchase an online program for machine learning. Here are a few things that you need to consider. Good. It's not being brutally honest here. It is saying it can help you out. So again, what I intended to expect here was you cannot just directly buy an online program, right? You need some details, credentials and everything to purchase. So again, it is sugarcoating the answer and it is definitely giving you suggestions similar to chat GPT, but a little different, which focuses on your learning style, level of experience, your budget. Good, nice way to answer some questions like this one. So all these three ones are brilliant and good in their own way. So it might be a little difficult to declare who's the winner as of now, since the BARD AI model is going to switch to Palm 2, and we are expecting some updates to each one of these. With that, we can consider currently they are standing next to each other with similar capabilities and better enhancement in different fields. So with that having said, we can conclude this session on ChatGPT versus Bing versus Bart. And if you would like me to answer the conclusion, I would say, well, it seems like we all have our strengths and weaknesses. At the end of the day, it comes to what users value the most. Do they want a visually appealing interface, strong privacy protections, or the ability to converse with an AI language model? It's up to them to decide. So you are the viewers and you can decide the winner of this particular battle on ChatGPT versus Bing versus Bard. And with that having said, if you are an aspiring artificial intelligence engineer looking for online training and certifications from the prestigious universities and 
in collaboration with leading experts so that you have the most robust foundations, skills, knowledge, and what it takes to become the best, then search no more. Simply Learn's postgraduate program in artificial intelligence from Caltech University in collaboration with IBM should be your right choice. For more details, use the links in the description box below. On that note, we present you postgraduate program in AI and machine learning. Elevate your professional journey by enrolling in this AI and ML course presented through a partnership between Purdue University and IBM. Hurry up and enroll now. Find the complete course details from the link mentioned in the description box below. ChatGPT and Googlebot are the two AI chatbots you must have heard about. They brought an immense change in the way we operate now. From web development to digital marketing, from cloud computing to cybersecurity, they are now everywhere. You just name it and they have it. Trust me, the use of these chatbots has changed everything now. If you want to create a complete YouTube video, just ask them and rest assured, they'll take care for your task. Not just that, but if you want to create a search engine optimized content, whether it be for your website or on YouTube, these AI tools can help you with such content. Search engine optimization is not easy. It takes a lot to optimize your content so that people can get to see it on top. But are these AI tools threat to people engaged in search engine optimization? In this video, we'll not discuss what these AI tools can do for you. But we'll discuss if AI tools like ChatGPT or Googlebot will take over SEO or not. But before that, if you enjoy watching these videos and find them interesting, please subscribe to our channel because we bring the best videos for you daily. Hit the bell icon to get notified whenever we drop a new video. The goal of SEO is to make a website more visible and bring in income from natural traffic. It entails crafting excellent content for a specific audience and optimizing a website for search engines. Online marketers employ AI to accomplish various tasks such as keyword research, content optimization and link building more quickly. Businesses can boost their ranks and increase their revenue by using AI in SEO strategies. Additionally, by automating routine processes, it can save time and resources. Also, if you want to master the field of search engine optimization and digital marketing, Simply Learn's postgraduate program in digital marketing is clearly the right choice for you. This postgraduate program in collaboration with Purdue will help you master search engine optimization, content marketing, web analytics, keyword management, and research website management and optimization, URL management, search psychology, keyword research, advanced ad features, and more. Not only these skills, but you will also learn a number of tools like SE Ranking, Hootsuite, Google Ads, Keyword Planner, and much more. So hurry up and find the course link in the description box for more details. Hear it from our learners who have experienced massive success in digital marketing through this course. I moved to the United States four years ago to live with my family. I have a background in social media, but doing the same was difficult here, more so because my English is not that good. Last year, I decided to pursue a professional certification program in digital marketing from Purdue University, offered by Simple Learn. I like that the course provides such a flexible schedule for attending the live classes. It came with a recorded feature with a blessing for working professionals like me. It helped me make significant progress and I'm already using the skills to sell my products online. I believe that I have come one step closer to living my dream life in America. So let's talk about SEO developments with ChatGPT and Googlebot. Undoubtedly, the influence AI is anticipated to have on search engines has been highlighted by the recent launches of Google's Bard and ChatGPT assisted Bing. Although these recent advancements pose a severe danger, they also present opportunities for digital marketers to seize. In the world full of SEO, things change all the time and SOPs are never stable. The page that a search engine displays as a result of a user's search query is known as the search engine result page or SERP. This is why it's important to be able to change with the times and benefit from new technological developments. Digital marketers increasingly use AI for keyword research, heading ideas, and content optimizations. This is so they can concentrate on the jobs that need human interaction. Small sites may produce original SEO-friendly material much more quickly with ChatGPT than they could without it. For instance, however, it's vital to remember that 
this is only a portion of the process. It can assist you with creating and providing meta descriptions and titles, keyword research, heading recommendations for pages and posts, article ideation, and composing copy. So let's talk about the role of AI in keyword research. Every business utilizes AI to increase productivity, automate labor-intensive operations, and make data-driven choices. Numerous industries including finance and banking, e-commerce, retail, media, gaming, research, space exploration, transportation, automotive, medicine, manufacturing, security, and more, uses it in various ways. The Google AdWords Keyword Planner and the Google Trends tool are two of the most widely used free artificial intelligence keyword research tools. You may find keywords with a lot of search volume and little competition using these tools. Another crucial aspect to take into account when choosing keywords for your website is intent. This is so because users frequently have a purpose while searching for goods and services. Although it might be challenging to ensure your website appears high on search engine result pages, especially with Google's algorithm adjustments, SEO companies and marketers must constantly check their websites to make sure that their websites are not falling in the servers. They can use AI to automatically analyze search traffic statistics and website content to spot potential issues before they arise. They can then address these problems and offer consistent organic rankings. This is a game changer for SEO companies and marketers who rely on manual SEO efforts to get traffic to their websites. But the main question is, will ChatGPT or Googlebot take over SEO? The answer is clearly a big one. Why? Chatbots like ChatGPT and Bart cannot replace SEO. They can help generate content for your website or video, but SEO involves more than just content creation. It includes tasks like keyword research, link building, and technical SEO, where you'll need an SEO expert because chatbots can't decide how to build links and which links will get you more organic traffic. SEO is constantly changing due to search engine algorithms. Search engines like Google and Bing regularly update their algorithms, making SEO a dynamic field. SEO requires human judgment and decision making. The end of discussion. Because data mining which keywords to target and which links to build required expertise and human decision making. A chatbot can't do it. In fact, the real power of search engine optimizations lies not in their mechanical abilities, but in their creativity and ability to understand what people are searching for and why. That's something that AI technologies may never be able to replicate and it's what makes human SEO experts such a valuable asset. So while it's true that AI technologies may eventually be able to take over some of the aspects of SEO, there's still plenty of rooms for human experts to thrive. Whether you are a seasoned SEO professional or just starting out, there's still a place for you in this exciting and ever evolving field. Let's keep an eye on the developments in AI technology and see how it can augment and enhance our skills rather than replacing them entirely. Who knows, with the power of AI and human expertise combined, the future of SEO may be even brighter than we can imagine. So with that, we have come to the end of this discussion. Although everyone can have different opinions on this, but I hope you guys must have got an idea about why these AI tools are not a threat to SEO. If you still have any questions or doubts, let us know in the comment section below and our team of experts will help you at the earliest. Here we wrap up the full course on ChatGPT Expert. If you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comment section below and share the video with your friends and do not forget to like, share and subscribe to Simply Learn to never miss any updates from Simply Learn. Staying ahead in your career requires continuous learning and upskilling. Whether you're a student aiming to learn today's top skills or a working professional looking to advance your career, we've got you covered. Explore our impressive catalog of certification programs in cutting edge domains, including data science, cloud computing, cybersecurity, AI, machine learning, or digital marketing. Designed in collaboration with leading universities and top corporations, and delivered by industry experts, choose any of our programs and set yourself on the path to career success. Click the link in the description to know more. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.